can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 621 heated discussions about the wondrous math problem on the internet. At the same moment, a math problem had suddenly caused a stir on the seemingly calm Weibo. A Weibo verified user whose account belonged to a Beijing No. 2 experimental primary school teacher had posted an elementary math problem online, who can answer this? Everyone, come and give a try. At the beginning, no one really thought anything about this. On seeing the call for a challenge to solve the question, at most some people would come and take a look at it, thinking that an elementary math problem couldn't possibly be too difficult. Even secondary level math questions were not a problem for them, besides, who hadn't studied in primary school before. And so, someone began with an attempt to answer the question but just as they seriously started reading the question, they found that it was basically different from what they had expected. Damn. What the heck? F asterisk asterisk K. What kind of math question is this? There's music? Is this an elementary math question? Can someone tell me what is the meaning of the question? Is the first answer 1 by 3? Is it correct? F asterisk asterisk K, I don't know. Are primary school students learning how to defy logic these days? It's impossible to answer the question. Which teacher was so wicked to set such a wicked question? Foot, I've already given up. Same here, my head is swelling. Then, the number two experimental primary school teacher followed up with a post again. Please note that this elementary math problem was set by our China's famous mathematician, Professor Zhong Yi, today. And to give everyone an additional blow, the math question was for our students in the second grade at number two experimental primary school. 93.2% of the students answered correct. Only two students in the whole class got it wrong while the rest of the students got it right. With that, the Weibo post was attracting a lot more attention and was getting livelier than before. What? Zhong Yi set the question? Is it really an elementary math problem? Since it was Zhong Yi who set them, then it must not be simple or straightforward. It was needless of you to say that. How could a world class mathematics expert set an ordinary elementary math problem? There must surely be many layers of profundity in it. I'm getting interested now, watch me solve it. The percentage of right answers by the primary school students was more than 90%. I wouldn't believe it even if you threatened to kill me. I don't even know the meaning of this question. Primary students can't possibly answer it. Even if they were elite students from a key focus primary school, they couldn't possibly be smarter than an adult. Watch me do it. I'll give it a try too. I'm sure it can be solved, let me think. I still won't believe it. Gradually, the netizens kept posting their answers, with each one becoming weirder than the last. Suddenly, some celebrities also showed up, some of them being Zhong Yi's friends. Yao Jinsai posted, what lousy question did little Zhong set? Peking University's teacher Su Na posted, I'm so angry. Asterisk flips table asterisk. I better continue teaching my Chinese language. The mathematics world is way too scary. Xiao Lu from Beijing Television, Pfut, this question is really amusing, ding ding ding. Ding ding ding. But I have to say, this is exactly what Zhong Yi's style is like. Finally, the number two experimental primary school teacher appeared again and revealed the correct answers. Needless to say, a few of the netizens really could answer it correctly, but the rest of the people, numbering in the thousands, got it wrong or did not manage to answer at all. This ratio left everyone in disbelief as they all wondered if those children from number two experimental primary school students, who were more than 90% correct, were all F asterisk asterisk king aliens. They adults were not as good as a group of primary students? What's going on? Isn't this absurd? Was that teacher from no? Two experimental primary school just spouting nonsense? Are the children these days all abnormal like that? The netizens were all expressing their denial of this. At this moment, Dean Pan of Peking University's School of Mathematical Sciences, whether told by some students or had happened to chance upon this math question, also posted on Weibo, knowing that this was a trick question, and told everyone, haha, only Professor Zhong Yi can think of such devious questions. I can say for sure that this is really an elementary math problem but with a hidden catch somewhere in it. 
For a primary school student, it may not seem like a trap, however this is a trap that was specifically laid for an adult to fall into. When they saw that, everyone began to shout and clamor. Huh? This was a trap for us. Zhong Yi is really too wicked. This guy has always had a character like that. Foot, I knew it. Teacher Zhong himself is already a trap. A trap of great proportions. Whoever gets involved with him will fall into it. What kind of trap is it? Dean Pan, can you kindly explain it? Dean Pan replied on Weibo, the principle of this trap falls on the different thought process of an adult and a child. Adults easily complicate simple things, and this complication probably starts right off at the reading of the question. It is a subconscious thought process that children do not employ. Whether it is a musical note or an onomatopoeic word, it's the same thing to them. These onomatopoeic words are basically meaningless to them, so they can easily see the essence of the question and solve it. From a certain perspective, a majority of adults might really be inferior to a primary school student at this and so would be unable to answer the question right, so that's how it is. Holy shit, so that's the reason. I was still wondering. Zhong Yi, this son of a bitch. If he doesn't con someone in a day, he will not feel comfortable. There was a wave of condemnation flung from everyone at Zhong Yi, as they laughingly scolded his wickedness. Dean Pan posted, it might look to be just an elementary math problem, but behind it lies some philosophies and reflections which are definitely not of the elementary level. Professor Zhong Yi is no doubt a rare genius in the mathematics world. This question is indeed very interesting. I have already copied it down and will prepare to use it for our Peking University students to try, and also to analyze it. For some problems and questions, if we change our perspectives and view it from a different angle, we may somehow get an unexpected result. Professor Little Jong has let everyone know to never underestimate a simple-looking question at any time or any place. Because they might not be as simple as you think, but at the same time, they might also not be as complicated as you thought it to be. Ah. Let the Peking University students try out the elementary math problem. And even analyze it in detail? Dean Pan's words were no doubt a very high appraisal of both this elementary math problem as well as Zhong Yi himself. After seeing Dean Pan's explanation, everyone began to understand and see the trick to this math question. Upon deeper reflection, everyone had no choice but to admire Zhong Yi's talent, knowledge, and different way of thinking. An elementary math problem stuffed with many tricks, including philosophy, psychology, and even the importance of mathematics, with the key point being that it could also produce such a mass face slapping effect on others? Perhaps in the whole of China, only someone like Zhong Yi, who could make something out of nothing, could come up with a question like that. Chapter 622, ticked off by the elementary school teachers. Online, the netizens who had been left scratching their heads at that elementary math problem were all denouncing Zhong Yi in waves. Offline, at number 2 Experimental Primary School, in the second grade teacher's office, Zhong Yi was also surrounded by several male and female teachers, listening to their complaints. Chun Chun's too naughty. Yes, in so many years of teaching, I've never seen any child as mischievous as her. Teacher Zhong, you've been too lax in the caring of your kid. In all the tests that I have arranged for the class, Chen Chen has never passed even once. The previous time, during PE classes, she even fought with a boy. When we learned of it, we rushed over to check on them. Thinking that Chen Chen had been bullied, we scolded the boy without a second thought but later realized that nothing had happened to Chen Chen at all. Instead, she left the boy lying on the ground with just a push, giving him a gigantic bruise on his arm. When the boy's parents came to school to question the teachers and found out that it was a little girl who did it, they did not take it up any further, possibly embarrassed by the fact that their boy had been pushed by a girl. Class 1 is not easy to handle because Chen Chen always leads some of the students to cause trouble together with her. Teacher Zhong, you have to talk to her a little when you return later. Even though she is not your own daughter, as a guardian, you have have to help educate her. After all, you're also a teacher of the people. The second grade teachers were full of gripes. Zhong Yi could only constantly reassure them, all right, I will definitely tell her off when I get back, yes, what you said was correct, ayo, you're really tolerant, I will speak to her when we go back, yes, 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 sure, sure, sure. This devil of a child. How worrisome can she get? 
Only when the teachers continued with their grieving did Zhong Yi realize how much trouble Chen Chen had actually caused. She was already the gang leader of Number 2 Experimental Primary School, giving the teachers all kinds of complaints. Luckily, because the teachers knew of Zhong Yi's status as a literary master and an internationally recognized mathematician, they still gave him some face and did not lash out too harshly at him. Of course, there were two female teachers who were just laughingly criticizing Zhong Yi for his neglect in disciplining the child, but did not actually have any bias against Chen Chen at all. In fact, they really liked the child who appeared like a porcelain doll that was more beautiful looking than any others. Besides, Chen Chen did not make any trouble for them in their classes anyway, so they just playfully scolded Zhong Yi a little as it was a rare opportunity. A big shot B lister, a well known person in society, when put into the hands of these teachers, it would be a wasted opportunity if they did not make use of the chance to say a few words. As they were there talking, a soft singing voice floated in from outside. When will the moon be clear and bright, with a cup of wine in my hand, I asked the clear sky. It was, wishing we last forever, but sang in a very odd way. The voice belonged to a woman, but sounded very hoarse and strained. This was not a pitch and tone that most women would be able to sing in and it made anyone who heard it feel very strange. The singing was getting closer and closer. A music teacher threw up her hands and said, Raspi Luo is here. An art teacher gently rubbed her ears and said, it sounds so unpleasant. This little Luo, why does she always have to sing every day? A teacher who was much older said, I wouldn't mind it if she sang well, but just listen to that. Zhao Mai, the form teacher of class 1, laughed, I think it's not too bad, just that teacher Luo's voice isn't that nice to listen to. Beside her, a female teacher nodded and said, teacher Luo must not have taken good care of her voice when she was going through puberty and that must have caused her voice to sound like the manly voice she has now. Zhong Yi asked curiously, who is this teacher Luo? Hearing Zhong Yi's question, Zhao Mai said, it's teacher Luo Yu, our school's physical education teacher. Because teacher Luo likes to sing a lot, she's always humming a song wherever she goes. But as her voice sounds really rough, everyone gave her the nickname of a raspy Luo. Raspy Luo? Physical education teacher? Zhong Yi nodded, but his ears perked up and listened carefully to this singing voice that was getting nearer and nearer. There was no music accompaniment or rhythm, just pure singing. However, this singing stirred up a very different kind of feeling in Zhong Yi, but he did not know how exactly he felt about this raspy Luo's singing. In any case, it was just a very weird feeling. Suddenly, the singing stopped. The teacher's office door was pulled open by someone from outside and Luo Yu appeared standing at the door. Zhong Yi looked over and saw a woman who was built quite muscularly, at a height of about 1.6 meters tall, probably weighing around 160 pounds or heavier. Her face looked pretty normal, not pretty but not ugly either. To use the description from his previous world, she would be called a tough girl and probably be known as a tough girl among tough girls. Anyone who saw her would be pretty in awe of her appearance. Point one Zhao Mai said, Teacher Luo, your class has ended? Luo Yu's speaking voice also sounded very hoarse. She said, yes. A. Eh? She noticed Zhong Yi standing there and asked, is this a new teacher? Or someone's parent? Zhong Yi introduced him, this is Zhong Yi, Chen Chen's guardian. When Luo Yu heard that, her eyebrows immediately narrowed as she exclaimed, so you're Chen Chen's guardian. She said to Zhong Yi, that child of yours is really incorrigible. Every time during PE class, she just tries to sit it out. When she has to do any running, she doesn't run properly, it's also the same for the aerobic exercises. She just doesn't want to learn them properly. Then there was this incident in which she even fought with someone during my class. She pushed the boy down and left him sprawled out on the ground. Her strength was really too much. In the end, I was called up to see the school leaders because of that and even got a bad scolding from them. Zhong Yi thought to himself, knowing that the child had been taught some basics by a certain someone. Chen Chen's aunt had taught her the eight trigrams palm from a young age, letting her learn the basic movements and making her do the horse stance for training. Even if her physical conditions as a child now restricted her from learning the true form of the eight trigrams palm, the basics and foundations were still not something that anyone else her age would be able to match. Zhong Yi felt that even if another kid were to gang up together with that male classmate, Chen Chen could still handle them, being such a brawny child. 
Zhong Yi humbly said, you're right, I will most definitely tell her off. Luo Yu wasn't finished. She continued telling him off, you parents and guardians are always like this. You all spoil the child at home too much, not beating or scolding them, making these children harder and harder to teach these days. They're not obedient to the teachers at all. She continued chirping, airing all her grievances. The math teacher, Li Jiaxing, interrupted and said, Teacher Luo, that's enough. It's not easy being a parent these days, the problem of children's education is a subject of national importance and would change in accordance with the changes in society. It's not something that just a few people can have influence over. Luo Yu did not like what she heard and said, if there's a problem with the children, then it has to be the responsibility of the parents or guardians. Why should it be blamed on society? Besides, is Ario Chen Chen just your usual kind of mischievous kid? Let's not mention her relationship with the other students, just based on her attitude to the teachers, she has never known how to respect others. She always says things here and there that drives us crazy. She turned to look at Zhong Yi again. We've already called for her guardian to come to school many times to discuss this. It was a big sis last time, and this time, it's you. No matter how many times we call you over, it has not been effective in the slightest. Do you really wish to raise the child properly? Are you just going to neglect this matter like that? After brooding for a long time. Luo Yu finally said all that she wanted to. She drank water from her thermal flask in large gulps before she finally settled back down at her desk, ignoring Chen Chen's guardian from then on. Zhong Yi was feeling really helpless. When had he ever been talked to like this before? First it was a group of teachers who grumbled to him non-stop, then came a PE teacher lecturing him for not properly caring for the child, but Zhong Yi could not and should not talk back to any of that since it was really Chen Chen's fault for being disobedient and always causing trouble. Ari, what a huge loss of face this was. Zhao Mai quickly eased the situation by saying, Teacher Zhong, Teacher Luo was just saying that for the good of the child, so she might have been a little harsh, but don't take it to heart. Teacher Luo is a good person and very meticulous towards the children. Zhong Yi said, I understand. So then, if there's nothing else, I should be leaving now. I will go out for a smoke and then wait for Chen Chen to finish school before picking her up. As Chen Chen's actual guardian is not around and has gone to handle some matters, I will be watching over her temporarily. If there's anything, you can just contact me. Okay, let me see you out then, Zhao Mai said. Zhong Yi quickly said, don't worry about it. Li Jiaxing immediately said, teacher Zhong, take care, take care. He wanted to see Zhong Yi out as well, but was stopped by Zhong Yi who insisted that he not. The other second grade teachers also waved happily to Zhong Yi to signal their farewells. After Zhong Yi left the teacher's office, Luo Yu looked at them in some confusion and asked, What are you all up to? What teacher Zhong? Why are you being so polite with him? You guys even wanted to see him out? The fine arts teacher said in a speechless manner, You're really a thick one. Don't you know who that is? If you knew who he was, would you have criticized him so harshly? The music teacher laughed and said, little Luo's still the gutsiest. Luo Yu was a little taken aback when she asked, who is he? Li Jiaxing glanced at her and asked, you don't even know who Zhong Yi is? Luo Yu, still not knowing what was going on, said, what Zhong Yi or Li Yi? I don't know them at all. Zhao Mai didn't know how to react. She said, the song you were singing just before you came into the teacher's office just now. Wasn't that song written and composed by Zhong Yi based upon his poem Shurei Jiao Gatu? When she heard that, Luo Yu's eyes immediately widened as she froze in her seat. After being stumped for a second, she rose from her chair and said, Ah? That was Zhong Yi? Li Jiaxing said, How could he not be? Luo Yu nearly fainted right there, but continued, He, he was wearing sunglasses and I couldn't recognize him at all. Holy shit! I've been singing that song that was written and composed by him almost every day. Li Jiaxing said with a belittling attitude, come now, why would a PE teacher like you not do something else but just sing that song every day? When you were coming into the office earlier, teacher Zhong Yi already heard your singing. That lousy voice of yours probably left the original writer and composer feeling frustrated. The language teacher giggled, before you came in, we had already spoken to teacher Zhong Yi for a long time about Chen Chen but we were just talking in general and letting him know what the problems were. 
but you, you were really unforgiving, you even accused teacher Zhong Yi of being negligent in properly caring for his kid. No matter what, he's still a Peking University associate professor. Luo Yu exclaimed, I, I really did not know it was him. How could he be Chin Chin's guardian? Ayo, I've heard rumors that Zhong Yi's temper is really bad. Do you guys think that I've gotten myself into trouble now? Yes. 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 That's for sure. You've made a huge mess this time. All of the teachers were gleefully quipping at Luo Yu's troubles. Luo Yu vomited blood right there. Chapter 623 Zhong Yi's Wondrous Math Lecture In the evening. The rippling rays of the evening sun shone as it set. At Jiaomen East, Zhong Yi's rented apartment. Standing in the open kitchen, Zhong Yi sandwiched his phone between his shoulder and cheek while his hands prepared dinner. He placed the processed fish-flavored pork slices which he had bought from the supermarket into the pan, added some seasoning, then mixed and stirred it all about with the spatula. This person did not know how to cook, but he made do with whatever he could anyway. Zhong Yi said, Mom. I was still waiting for you to come home for dinner, his mother said. Didn't I already send you a text? Zhong Yi asked. His mother said, I just saw it. So you won't be back for a few days? Zhong Yi said, yes, I'll be staying in Jiamen for now as my landlady needed to go away for some time. And I have to help her take care of the kid. Ah, uh, don't bring it up. Just talking about it makes me angry. The kid's school called me up to ask me to make a trip to the school today. When I was there, a group of teachers criticized me about her behavior. What a loss of face I suffered. HMPH, seeing kids behave in this way these days has given me mental trauma, and severely impacted this bro's passion for children should I get married in the future. If my children turn out to be so naughty and uncontrollable in the future, I would totally get tired out. His mother said, you don't even have a partner yet, and you're already thinking about children? Zhong Yi laughed and said, don't force my hand, or else I might just suddenly bring someone home on one of these days as your daughter-in-law. If she turns out to be too beautiful for you, don't be shocked. You'd better be prepared for it. His mother happily said, yes, continue bragging all you want. Zhong Yi said, whether I'm bragging or not, you'll find out in the future. His mother said, all right, all right, your mom will wait and see. I need to stop talking now. I still have to prepare dinner. Zhong Yi used the spatula to stir the food in the pan. His mother said, whoa, you even know how to cook now? Make sure the food is well cooked. Don't let the little one get a stomachache. Got it. Zhong Yi hung up and put his phone onto a clean area on top of the refrigerator before he did a taste test on the saltiness of the dish he was preparing. Chen Chen, sitting on the sofa and looking very glum, said, Zhong Yi, I'm hungry. Zhong Yi grumbled under his breath, what are you in a rush for? Just wait. Chen Chen's stomach had already been rumbling for quite some time now. After she had the argument in the afternoon with the teacher, she did not eat much of her food either. She shouted, John Yi! I'm hungry! John Yi! I'm hungry! What are you rushing for? It's almost done! John Yi turned off the heat, put the food onto a plate, and brought it to the table. Chen Chen did not wait for him and picked up the chopsticks and began eating. When she had eaten a mouthful, she inadvertently gave a look of dislike. She said, Zhong Yi, it's not good. Zhong Yi said, oh, is that so? It's not good, Chen Chen insisted. Zhong Yi gave it a taste and said, it's not bad. Then he scooped out two bowls of rice and sat back down at the table. Picking up his chopsticks, he started eating happily and said, your uncle Zhong's standard is just that. It's good enough that you have something to eat. It's definitely cooked, so don't worry about getting food poisoning. Saying that, he picked up a large portion of the food for Chen Chen and put it into her bowl with his chopsticks. Quickly eat. Your aunt definitely won't be back this week, and I don't know if she will be back next week either. You'll be sticking around me for a while, so let's just make do with whatever we can. If this is not good enough, then we'll order takeout or buy frozen dumplings tomorrow. Chen Chen thought about it for a long time before unwillingly picking up her chopsticks to continue eating. Zhong Yi spoke as he ate, these next several days, I will be taking care of you, so you have to listen to me. 
Let's have an agreement beforehand. First, you have to eat your meals at the right time and in the right quantity every day, so that when your aunt comes back, she will not see that you have lost any weight and blame me if you do. Second, you have to do your homework after dinner, if you don't have any homework or have finished it already, then you have to do your own revision until 8 p.m. Your form teacher gave me a dressing down today, I don't even know how to face her. You'd better buck up so that it doesn't become necessary for me to make another trip to your school again. Oh, then third and last point, you have to go to bed by 10 p.m., so no late night of watching cartoons. Did you hear all of that? Chen Chen did not say anything. Zhang Yi looked at her and asked again, I'm asking you. Do you understand? Chen Chen eventually voiced her acquiescence. Only then was Zhang Yi satisfied. With the landlady auntie not around, the full responsibility in taking care of the child rested on his shoulders. Not only did he have to take care of her meals, he had to oversee her learning and extracurricular activities as well. Hi, it was only after taking charge that he knew of the responsibilities, taking care of a child was really tiring to the soul. After the meal. Shu, go and do your homework. Okay. Don't just say okay, you have to do it physically as well. Okay. Chen Chen sat herself down on Zhang Yi's sofa, opened her school bag and took out a book, pencil, and eraser. She slowly started to do her homework and paused every so often. Zhang Yi sluggishly dragged his feet to the kitchen to wash the dishes. After a long time of not doing chores, he really did not have any motivation to move at all. Laziness was a kind of habit, once you got into the rhythm of this habit, it was extremely difficult to get out of it. This was the situation Zhang Yi was in right now. Old Wu had taken great care of him, and when he was at his parents' house, they would not let him do any chores either, so having not stayed alone for a very long time now, it was really difficult to get accustomed to this life again. After washing all the dishes, Zhang Yi went to take a look on Chen Chen. However, when he saw that she had only written a single line in her workbook, he angrily said, What have you been doing here for so long? Chen Chen said, Doing my homework. Zhang Yi said, Why did you take so long just to write almost nothing? Zhang Yi. Chen Chen pushed her workbook to him and said, Help me write. Zhang Yi stared at her and said, Write it yourself. If you don't finish it, then I won't let you watch cartoons later. When it's time, you will go directly to bed. After that, he ignored her and went to lie down on his bed while watching the news on TV. Central TV News Entertainment News He was watching it with enjoyment. In the past, Zhang Yi was never too interested in the news as he found it really dry. But after he had become a celebrity, he took a liking to it, part of it being that keeping up with the news was necessary for his career. He had to be updated about the social topics and current affairs so that he could be in step with the times. Chen Chen looked up with the pencil with her hands. Zhang Yi, you're disturbing me. Zhang Yi impatiently grabbed the remote control and said, I'll lower the volume, continue doing your homework. Chen Chen said, it's still noisy. Zhang Yi lowered the volume even more and said, it should be all right now. It's still noisy, Zhang Yi. Turn it off, Chen Chen said unhappily. Zhang Yi smacked his lips and turned off the television in annoyance. He said, you've been working for quite a while now but that's all you've written. You're so troublesome. All right, all right, the television's off now. Chen Chen continued to work on her homework. Zhang Yi looked around and decided that he could only use his cell phone to browse Weibo for now. After a short time browsing, he noticed the math problem he had given at number 2 experimental primary school this afternoon was posted onto Weibo. It had even attracted a heated discussion in the afternoon as it received a lot of attention from the netizens. This was something Zhang Yi had not expected. But after thinking a bit about it, when this wondrous math question was brought out in his previous world, it had also created quite a stir from many people on the internet. It was widely discussed at the beginning. Not until when everyone had gotten used to the existence of this problem did the hype die down. And so, when this wondrous, brain teaser, math problem that had not existed in this world largely filled with traditional and regular math questions appeared, it naturally attracted a lot of interest and attention from people since it was a new style of a math question. They were also denouncing him? On Weibo, many people cried out with anger, 
as though Zhong Yi's elementary math question from the afternoon had inflicted damage to the self-esteem of these adults. They were all calling for him to give them a chance to make up for their loss of face. At Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong, you better appear right now. Zhong Yi, you're so wicked and mean. Give us another question. I refuse to believe that I can't solve it. Right, this time we'll definitely get it right. If you're so good, give us another elementary math problem. I was just too careless before. It ended up with my girlfriend making fun of me for the whole afternoon. She even said that my IQ is lower than a primary school student's. I'm so furious. That question was made to trick people, it was phrased to baffle us. But if we knew what was going on beforehand, then no matter what questions you posed us, we wouldn't have any trouble with it for sure as long as it is really just an elementary math problem. Right, as long as it's restricted to elementary math questions, we'll solve them in a glance for sure. Some were calling for a challenge while others were making a scene. Peking University's teacher Su Na also came forward to comment, I suggest that teacher Zhong start a class on Weibo and post some elementary math problems for everyone to try out. Since Zhong Yi was not busy with anything, he immediately replied to Su Na, sure. And so, Zhong Yi posted a separate Weibo post, due to popular demand and requests for a challenge, in today's, Zhong Yi's classroom, I shall share several questions for discussion. The same rules apply. I guarantee that it will be an elementary math problem that is meant for second or third grade students. We will see who can answer them. The time limit is an hour after I post the problem. If someone can answer all of them correctly, then I will even add a prize as a reward. If there are too many people, the prize will be given out as a lucky draw. If there aren't that many who can answer correctly, then all those who get it right will get a prize. It can be my autograph or my calligraphy pieces, we can always discuss that later, ha ha. When the netizens saw this, they all gathered together over at Zhong Yi's post. Wow. There's even a prize? Zhong Yi's calligraphy works sound really good. That's great. Give us the question then. I can't wait. Count me in. Me too, I'm here as well. At this moment, the long unseen big saber bro also made an appearance. My large saber is again 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 unable to endure the thirst. Give us the problem quickly. Mathematics happened to be my forte. Yao Jinsai also appeared and said, what's up again? A Peking University teacher who was verified on Weibo joined in too. He could be considered Zhong Yi's colleague, but as Zhong Yi had not officially been given any classes before at the math department, he wasn't too familiar with this teacher. He didn't even know him by name, but would probably know him if he saw him. The teacher said, let me give it a try too. Even a Peking University teacher had been forced to make an appearance. In the end, many other Peking University students, whether they were Chinese department or math department, also joined in. They were all eager and ready to solve the question as they were not in time this afternoon to catch the first question, and had only seen it for the first time when Dean Pan's Weibo discussed it. As such, they already knew the answer to it before they saw the questions, so there was no chance for them to even think about it. As such, many of them did not find the question to be difficult at all. After all, this was just an elementary math problem. People from everywhere started popping up. With the momentum from the previous wondrous math problem, and the addition of gimmickry, goading, as well as prizes as encouragement, many Weibo users had already arrived at this post of Zhong Yi's in no time. Everyone wanted to see what kind of an elementary math problem Zhong Yi would pose to them, and if it was really going to another wondrous question. Surely it couldn't be more baffling and trickier than that earlier question, right? 1,000 people. 5,000 people. 10,000 people. More than 10,000 netizens had arrived to join in the fun here. Before the questions were even given, the post had already been forwarded 3,000 times. The scene was very grand as everyone went crazy, wanting to give the questions a try for themselves. No one believed that they could not do it. Chapter 6 24 Question after question, the math questions that made everyone vomit blood. There were countless people waiting. Where are the questions? Teacher Zhong, hurry up. We're all waiting for them. I'm going to get Zhong Yi's calligraphy for sure. 
Ha ha, if all of us answer correctly, then with tens of thousands of us winning the calligraphy prize, teacher Jong might not be able to complete them even after his 30th birthday. He he he, we can finally get something out of Jong Yi. Yeah, he has always been the one winning against others. Looks like the tables have finally turned. He will lose this for sure. The wisdom of the crowd is infinite. Everyone, let's work together to finish off teacher Jong. Let's shake hands. Let's build an alliance. Right, if one of us cannot win against him, then let's stand together to deal with teacher Jong. Even if teacher Jong has superhuman powers, he can't compete with the essence of everyone's wisdom combined together. Besides, he has already stated that it will be a second or third grade type of math question, so this time, we must show Jong Yi how good we are. Agreed. Seconded. Let's get ready, everyone. We even have a Peking University math department teacher taking part, ha 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 ha. That means his Zhong Yi's colleague, a fellow math teacher from the country's best education institution. Zhong Yi must not have expected a fellow colleague would join in the fun, otherwise, how would he dare to boast and even put up prizes for the correct answer? Come on, let's all follow the Peking University math teacher's answer. Since the answers are all publicly shown and Zhong Yi's rules don't forbid copying either, shouldn't it be all right? Right, there's also support from the Peking University students. These students are all the most straight-A students among the straight-A students. I don't believe that, with so many of us, we can't crack some elementary math questions. Everyone felt confident. Along with Zhong Yi's teasing antics earlier to fan up interest, everyone was stoked and took up the challenge. If they could make Zhong Yi, who had an unblemished record in online battles, taste defeat this time, everyone would surely be delighted to see it. Even Zhong Yi's hardcore fans did not mind this outcome. You could even say they couldn't wish more for this outcome as they were the ones who were shouting and belittling Zhong Yi more than anyone else. Faced with such a scene, many people were overwhelmed. They wondered just how damn unlikable teacher Zhong could get. However, Zhong Yi kept his calm and was tickled by all that was happening. He understood that this was actually how an entertainment star should be. Being belittled like this by the fans and people was actually not a reflection of them disliking you. Just like what was happening here right now, it meant that everyone actually really liked Zhong Yi. It was time for the question. Watched by tens of thousands of pairs of eyes, the first question was released. The first problem of Zhong Yi's classroom, Little Zhong is the owner of a shoe shop. A pair of shoes cost 20 yuan to buy and sell for 30 yuan. A customer pays with a 50 yuan bill, but as Little Zhong did not have any spare change, he takes the 50 yuan to a neighboring shop to change for 5 10 yuan notes. Finally, he gives 20 yuan of change to the customer. Later, when the neighboring shop discovers that the 50 yuan note is counterfeit, Little Zhong has no choice but to pay them 50 yuan. All in all, how much money did Little Zhong lose? It's just this question? It looks pretty simple. Ha ha, come on, this looks like a very normal question. Many people had posted their comments immediately when they saw this question. After doing some calculations, they also posted their answers onto Weibo and felt that they had answered it correctly. However, after they had posted their answers online, they were in for a shock when they discovered that even in their group, people had different answers to the question. Some answered 20 renminbi. Some said it was 30 renminbi. There were also those who answered with 50 renminbi. They all nearly got into an argument over this. It's obviously 20 renminbi. No, it has to be 50 renminbi, do you all know how to math at all? It definitely has to be 30 renminbi, if it's not, I'll run into a wall. It's 60. The first question had already stumped most of the people who participated. Only then did these people realize how that was not some damn normal question at all. There was surely some trick to it somewhere, otherwise, why would they all arrive at different answers? However, what left them truly shocked were the next set of questions. After reading the next few questions, everyone suddenly felt that the first question was indeed just a very normal and typical elementary math question. The second problem was next. From 1 to 10, these numbers have been divided into four groups, 1, 3, 7, 8, 10, 5, 9, 2, 4, 6. Please explain the pattern that was used to separate them into their groups. 
Ah. What is this? Pattern? How is there any pattern in that as far of a sequence? Permutations and combinations? It isn't that either. Besides, this topic shouldn't be covered in the syllabus for elementary school math, right? Aren't these numbers just randomly arranged? There's no pattern at all. Your sister, what kind of questions are these? I'm going crazy. The netizens began to be stunned by what they were looking at. Followed by the third problem. 7111 is equal to 0. 8809 is equal to 6. 2172 is equal to 0. 6666 is equal to 4. 1111 is equal to 0. 2222 is equal to 0. 0000 equals 4. 5555 is equal to 0. 8193 is equal to 3. 8096 is equal to 5. 4398 is equal to 3. 9475 is equal to 1. 9038 is equal to 4. 3148 is equal to 2. Derive the following, 2889 equals? Holy F asterisk asterisk K. I'm gonna faint. 2889? Is this an addition subtraction equation? Using the above established answers to do addition and subtraction. Let me check which two figures when subtracted would give 2889. That's not right, there's no way to do add or subtract with those numbers to get 2889 at all. Ah. Question 4, this was a picture-based problem. In the first row, the images below are aliens, followed by four pictures of organisms in the second row, the images below are not aliens, followed by four pictures of organisms the question came at the third row where five pictures of organisms were shown, please circle which of the following are aliens. None of these pictures are the same. How can we deduce anything like that? In my opinion, these are all F asterisk asterisk king aliens. Finally, Zhong Yi said, all right, it's just these four questions for now, so everyone please give them a try. There are still 40 minutes left. If you can answer all of them correctly, there will be a prize. There are no rules, you may copy other people's answers too. Just collate all of the answers and comment with a Weibo account and that is enough. Finally, I would like to assure everyone that these are really just elementary math problems for primary school students. I won't set a question for everyone if it exceeds the level of 5th grade students. When everyone saw this, they went even crazier. I'm so shocked that I have pissed my pants. Heavens! Is the world of a primary school student really so terrible and scary? Primary school students. You guys win. I kneel to you. Kneeling as well. I've knelt. Firmly kneeling down. I'll no longer look down on primary school students. Those Weibo users who were still confidently trying to show Zhong Yi earlier what they could do were now all either dumbfounded or vomiting blood. Only at this moment did they realize just how much of a bastard Zhong Yi could be. How wondrous and terrifying could Zhong Yi's math problems get? They were basically more wondrous and more terrifying than the most wondrous and most terrifying math questions. No way, I need to give this some thought. There has to be a way to answer these. Let's put our heads together, everyone. Who has the magical being known as a primary school student in their homes? Quickly bring them out to help solve these questions. Right, find a primary school student. Foot, you guys are too cute. I give up. I've already fried my brains thinking. I've finally realized that we're not going to be able to enjoy ourselves seeing Zhong Yi lose. This person is AF asterisk asterisk King Psycho. He's a psycho and so are his questions. Plus 10,000. Zhong Yi, you cheat. I've totally never seen such wondrous questions before. Chapter 625 The Peking University Math Teacher Also Genuflects. Evening, 8 p.m. Chen Chen put down her pencil and held her workbook, then said, Zhong Yi, I finished my homework. I want to watch TV. Zhong Yi, who had been browsing Weibo all this while with a smile on his face, looked over when he heard her voice. He said, Did you really finish your homework? All right then, go and watch for a while. 
Chen Chen grabbed the remote control and then went to turn on the television and sat down on the sofa. She switched channels until she found the channel airing a recent, popular local cartoon and sat there watching expressionlessly. This cartoon was not about some big bad wolf or little white bunny type of child-oriented cartoon. It was one that was targeted more at male teenagers and even men in their twenties. Because the premise of the cartoon was about wuxia, there were fighting and romance spun into it. So even for someone at Zhong Yi's age, if he wasn't too picky about it, he could watch it if he wanted to give it a try. Zhong Yi. What now? The new episode has finished airing. Then that's all you get to watch today. I want to watch it from the start. Help me to do that. Do it yourself. I don't know how, Zhong Yi. Do it for me. Zhong Yi could not take the nagging and forced himself to get out of bed to take the remote control to play back the episode from the beginning. Task completed. Chen Chen started watching her cartoon and did not bother Zhong Yi anymore. Zhong Yi was happy and continued to nonchalantly interact with the netizens on Weibo. In a short period of time, those questions of his had also gone viral like the wondrous math problem from the afternoon. More and more Weibo users had gathered wave after wave to try the question, not believing that they could not solve it, vowing that they had to do so to differentiate their IQs from the primary school students. I'm here. How many more minutes are there? There's still about five minutes left, hurry up. I've solved one of the questions, but I don't know if it's the right answer. Hurry, 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 we're almost out of time. Everyone, don't give up, let's draw on the wisdom of the masses and try together. If not, we can just copy that Peking University math teacher's answer, but we must not let Zhongyi have the last laugh. Agreed. Brothers and sisters, let's attack. Slay teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi thought that this was really fun, and on top of that, his objectives were also met. He had started Zhong Yi's classroom, first, due to everyone's request. Second, for fun. Third, it was because Zhong Yi noticed the situation was just right, so he used this chance to increase his popularity as well. He took every opportunity he saw that could help him increase his popularity as a celebrity. After all you could never have enough and there was really no need to nitpick on how to get more. He had already risen up to B-list celebrity now, but to put it plainly, he was just the last place celebrity in the B-list rankings, the weakest one of all. Together with the person chasing him, Central TV's Spring Festival Gala host Chen Yi, who was in the top spot of the C-list ranking, still eyeing to get his position back with a lot of news and updates, it showed that he was not letting Zhong Yi have it easy. And so, Zhong Yi's online math class this time would definitely play an important role in helping him pull away from Chen Yi in the popularity rankings. He had to firmly grab hold of his position in the B-list celebrity rankings. In this world, the celebrity rankings index was an aggregation of data from many outlets, like the search rankings of a celebrity on various websites, number of Weibo followers, number of screen appearances, comments, and reviews of works, etc. Combining all those data, a popularity score would be derived and thus rank the celebrities accordingly. Whether it was really an objective way of collecting data, Zhong Yi did not know, but he knew that the people of this world all depended and watched this celebrity rankings index very closely, and recognized it as the authoritative aggregator. As for why each tier of celebrity rankings had limited spots in them, Zhong Yi had already read up on the explanation given by the official website which said that people follow a limited number of public figures, as each person's attention span was limited. For example, Xiaoming might like 20 celebrities, and to him, they all had a different ranking, some higher, others lower, some that he liked more than the others and also some that he would soon forget about. This was what was meant by a person's attention span was limited. So when he suddenly notices and likes a new celebrity, then the celebrity that was ranked last in his mind would probably be forgotten. Unless there were some new works or news about them, Xiaoming was unlikely to ever pay attention to them anymore. The people's attention span was limited, there was only so much of the pie that celebrities could get. This was the official reason why the spots in the celebrity rankings index were limited. Of course, if the market expanded in the future, be it due to rural urbanization, a rise in living standards, or increased spiritual fulfillment of people leading to an increase of people who used to be unconcerned with celebrities from the entertainment circle becoming concerned, then the pie would become bigger as well. 
When that happened, the authorities would also take it into consideration and update the design of the Celebrity Rankings Index. They would likely increase the number of spots available in each tier accordingly. However, such occurrences were rare, not even likely to happen once in two years, so it was pointless to depend on such events. Rather, it was safe to depend on yourself. Zhang Yi understood very clearly his plan and knew that it was a priority for him to stabilize his popularity score at this moment. As long as he could do that, then he could consider his next step to chase after the other big shots in the B list. Otherwise, all that he had done so far would be for naught. But looking at the current situation, it seemed that the effects were far reaching and had even overfulfilled his objective. It was time, the deadline was over. It was time to announce the answers. Zhang Yi posted on Weibo, OK, question time is over. Those who have not submitted their answers yet, you have one more minute to do so. It's already been an hour. Ah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm almost done. Just wait for a while more. Let me do a few more calculations. John Yi's colleague, the Peking University math teacher, also submitted his answer at the last moment. Suddenly, countless netizens went to look and copy his answers and used it as their own. When John Yi saw this, he dismissed it with a laugh. Then he began to give out the answers to the question one by one. Of course, he had to also include the explanation and solving process, as all these questions he had set were very tricky. If he did not do that and just gave an answer, the people who could not understand would not know why it would be the correct answer. They would not take it just like that, so Zhang Yi would have to help them to the end by giving the answer along with explanation. The first question. The second question. The third question. One by one the answers were revealed. After everyone saw them, they fell over like ninepins. Pfft. Oh God. So that's how it is. It really turned out to be elementary math problems? The question that needed us to count the closed loops has left me kneeling. Damn, how could this question turn out to be so simple? I even f asterisk asterisk king thought it has to do with permutations and combinations. What a ripoff. Teacher Jong, you're really too much of a ripoff. I finally understand why Teacher Jong has made so many enemies. Teacher Jong, if you keep scamming people this way, you won't be left with any friends soon. I'm gonna cry. F asterisk asterisk K. All the questions are such scams. They're all so deceptive. When they saw the questions an hour ago, they were already cursing at their mothers, but when they saw the answers now and realized it was so simple, they felt even more aggrieved. They started throwing a tantrum as one by one everyone started cursing at Zhang Yi hoping that he would get constipation, or step on a banana peel and slip. How on earth did he come up with so many extremely wondrous questions? Who got them right? Let's see who got them right. I got them wrong. I got them wrong too. The questions are really not difficult, but it was really too tricky. Many of those who had copied the Peking University math teacher's answer had realized now that he had also gotten one of his answers wrong. It was the answer for the second question that asked to explain the pattern that the numbers were separated by. 1, 3, 7, 8, first tone. 10, second tone. 5, 9, third tone. 2, 4, 6, fourth tone. This was a question that combined the testing of language and math. The netizens were utterly defeated. Even a Peking University math teacher could not get them all right? We were totally defeated with no survivors? It really seems like no one got them all right at all. We were really wiped out? Oh my god! Those Peking University math department scholars were also downed. None of them got all four questions correct. The most they had were three questions correct. Yao Jinsai said, I think it's better that I just go to bed. When the answers were released, I realized that I could not even understand what two of the questions were asking when faced with the answers. Peking University Su N.A., I didn't even get one. Big Saber Bro was the same. Fan Yingyun had only gotten one question correct. Zhang Yi knew about Big Saber Bro's math standard. As a world-renowned hacker and someone who was proficient in programming and code cracking, her math standards shouldn't be bad at all. With things like 010101, they often deal with binary. However having a good standard in math did not mean that they would be good at math problems. 
when it came to answering math questions, what was most important was the way they interpreted the question. This was an outcome that Zhong Yi had predicted. The first question had already filtered out 90% of the people who took part, the second question continued to attack them, while those who could do the third question were already considered non-existent. Back in Zhong Yi's previous world, when people saw these questions, they would be able to answer them almost immediately. But that was because most of those people had already seen the answers before, or had encountered the questions before, so they knew the trick to answering them. As such, a small group of people could solve the questions. However, it was different in this world. Everyone's learning and mindset of testing over here were all considerably more traditional and rigid. They had never encountered such questions before, so they did not have the fundamentals or flexibility of thought to deal with them. Being wholly wiped out this way was not an unexpected outcome at all. The people were utterly defeated. Zhong Yi took home a flawless victory. The Peking University math teacher stood forward to humbly say, when I saw these questions, together with this afternoon's question, I suddenly broke out in a cold sweat and couldn't help but think about something. It's lucky that the primary school test, secondary school exams, or even the national college entrance exams did not have Professor Zhong Yi taking part in the setting of papers. If that were the case, then without a doubt, it would be a total nightmare for those test and exam candidates. That's right. Damn, I'm taking my national college entrance exam this year, please don't scare me like that. Surely that won't happen, right? Please don't ever look for Zhong Yi to set the exam papers. If this person set a paper, then the straight A students from Peking University and Tsinghua University might not get more than 20 points. They might even end up with zero. The netizens were also shocked by this. Many of them were students. If someday they faced such questions in their exams, then it would really be unimaginable. And besides, not to forget that Zhong Yi had only posed these elementary math problems if he really set a few junior high high school, or university level questions, then wouldn't that make everyone unable to do anything? Who would dare thump their chests and say for sure that they could answer Zhong Yi's questions? No one would dare do that. Look at how the Peking University math teacher was left genuflecting in the face of these questions. On Weibo, an authoritative person in the field of education was also attracted by these elementary math problems. He appeared and said, after the answers to these questions were revealed, it showed that they were really not difficult at all in the first place, but the people who could really answer them correctly were just too few and far between. Zhong Yi's brain is truly a treasure of the mathematics world. These exciting and wondrous questions have also taught the education world something today. I have a feeling that in future exams and tests, we might be headed towards this new direction of development. In the past, our tests and exams were too corrupt and obsoletely structured. They're no longer able to keep up with the times. But Zhong Yi has now shown us a new direction that we could head towards. Chapter 626 Playing the Lottery Draw Again A few professionals and industry insiders had very high praises as well. These few math problems were widely discussed among the netizens. A few forums even stickered a post that included Zhong Yi's elementary math problems onto their front page, letting forum participants who did not know about the Weibo class that Zhong Yi had held earlier to try it out for themselves as well. All of them also fell for the trap of the questions and were complaining in frustration, sending mentions to at Zhong Yi and denouncing him for the NTH time today. I'm so angry right now that I could cry. These problems are really too frustrating. It's not the questions that are frustrating, it is Teacher Zhong. Teacher Zhong, show yourself. We promise that we won't beat you to death. You can't cheat us like this. Zhong Yi had enraged the masses, and his crimes were too numerous to mention. However, when Zhong Yi saw this, he was already laughing and getting off Weibo. It was time to go. He looked at his watch and saw that it was already 9.50 p.m. Having had some fun with the netizens, he did not know that it was already this late, so he turned back and had a look at Chen Chen, only to see her sitting on the sofa and still watching the cartoon, not blinking at all. Switch it off, now, Zhong Yi got out of bed and said. Chen Chen did not move but just said, let me watch a little more. Zhong Yi said with a straight face, we already agreed that you'd go to bed at 10pm. Don't think that just because your aunt is not around, no one will make sure of that. Quickly, go wash your face and then go to bed. 
Chen Chen continued staring at the television screen and said, Okay. Zhang Yi simply turned off the TV and then carried her, saying, Let's go. Chen Chen's little face showed her unhappiness. Zhang Yi carried her and walked casually to the bathroom. Chen Chen was too short, so Zhang Yi turned on the tap for warm water for her to wash her face and got a new toothbrush and put on some toothpaste for her to brush her teeth. He told her, There, brush your teeth. Hey, look at me, do you think I have it easy taking care of you? When your aunt gets back, I'm going to make sure she gives me a year of rental for free. Chen Chen, who was brushing her teeth, gave a faint ha ha to that. Zhang Yi rolled his eyes and said, Do you want to go back to your aunt's place to sleep or do you want to sleep here? Chen Chen spat out the toothpaste and said, Sleep here. All right then, I'll let you have the bed temporarily while I'll sleep on the sofa. Zhang Yi was still very considerate like an adult should be and did not make Chen Chen sleep on the sofa. When she was done washing up, Zhang Yi also washed his own face. When he came out, Chen Chen had already crept into bed, pulling the blanket over herself with both hands and lying down, looking rather cute while doing that. Do you feel comfortable with that pillow? Yes. Is it cold? Not cold. Okay, go to sleep then, good night. Okay. Zhang Yi conveniently turned off the lights and only left a desk lamp on since he was not intending to rest so early anyway. In recent days, as he did not have any work, the time he went to sleep was also getting later and later, so he was still feeling quite awake at the moment as he lay on the sofa. What should he do? Without landing a job first, it felt quite meaningless to do anything else. What Zhang Yi needed urgently right now was a stable television program that could let him shine on stage. His initial goal of turning into a B-list celebrity this year had already been achieved before the middle of the year, so needless to say, his next goal was definitely to aim for the A-list rankings. To this end, he definitely needed a stable program that could let him achieve a large increase in popularity. However, a good job would be great to have, but unable to be sought. Zhang Yi knew that this was not a matter that could be rushed, all he could do was increase his capability to compete and raise his level. When that happened, even if his potential employer felt that his character had shortcomings, his flaws would not belittle his potential. For example, Zhang Yi's recent hard work was all for that moment. Filming a movie, selling a program, throwing out wondrous math problems and rising into the B-list rankings, all of these made him feel that a job wasn't that far away anymore and a lot of television stations were probably already assessing and measuring his worth. It's not that he was blindly confident about himself. In fact he was being very objective in his own assessment, knowing that a B-list professional host like him with a large and stable fan base would surely move a lot of television stations. You should know that in the current industry the number of hosts, able to reach the level of a B-list celebrity were readily countable with the fingers of both hands, probably numbering at around 8 or 9 only. Anyone in this group of hosts could easily be considered in the class of being pillars for their employers. Well, it was time for a lottery draw then. He was going to try his luck and also do it in preparation for his new job. As no one but him could see the game ring's virtual screen, he wasn't afraid that Chen Chen would discover it, so he brought it up directly there to check how many reputation points he had available to use. 31 million reputation points. Just some days ago when he was trying to look for some work, Zhang Yi had activated his upgraded lucky halo and spent all of his reputation points, so these 31 million points were all gained after that. Come to think of it, his reputation points had gone up really quickly. As Zhang Yi was not the host for Do You Remember and also did not make an appearance on that show, the reputation points he would gain from it were definitely quite limited. Most of these 31 million reputation points were probably gained from the movie Grandmasters. As a supporting cast member and taking on the antagonist role, Zhang Yi felt quite satisfied that he was able to gain so many reputation points from the job. If he ever took on a lead role someday in a movie that could surpass 300 million in box office earnings, wouldn't he be able to gain a crazy amount of reputation points? Hi, I guess there's no point in thinking that far. Just concentrate on what's in front of my eyes. Zhang Yi knew that he should not bite off more than he could chew. Whatever was in the future, he could talk about that later. What mattered most was what was before him. Come on. He opened up the lottery drawer, 2, interface. 
This was the lottery draw that was unlocked after the system update, with each attempt at the slot machine costing 10 million reputation points. Zhong Yi did not hesitate at all here and just went ahead to purchase a pool. It began. The icons on the slot machine window spun at a very fast speed. Stats category. Empty. Empty. Consumption category. Empty. Skills category. The icons kept changing as it rolled by in a dazzling blur. In the past, it was possible to predict the where the needle would land as the needle spin was coming to a stop in Lottery Draw, 1. But Lottery Draw, 2, was not the same, as it employed the sliding icon movement encased in a window and was much more precise, thus not allowing the player to predict where it would land. As he saw that the slot machine was slowing down, Zhong Yi did not blink at all and just kept staring hard for the outcome. B-A-D-A B-A-D-A The icons slid past one at a time. Suddenly, one of the icons looked as though it still had some momentum and was about to continue sliding downwards, but without a warning, it seemingly lost all that energy. With a DA, it came to a stop. John Yi's eyes went blank. The final icon indicated was, empty. The 10 million reputation points were flushed down the drain. He did not receive any prizes. John Yi felt a great pain and clenched his teeth disgruntled. He ran to the bathroom to wash his hands and then came back immediately to spend another 10 million to play the lottery draw, too. Again. Again. I won't believe this. The slot machine began rolling again, spinning as the icon slid down very quickly, looking like a blur at first, before slowing down after a while. BADA, consumption category. BADA, special category. John Yi was calling out repeatedly in his mind, asking for it to stop right there. Ultimately, the slot machine did not follow his will as it went BADA again and slid down once more and stopped. Empty. It was empty again. John Yi's face turned green. F asterisk asterisk K, what's with this bro's luck today? It was 20 million. And he had just thrown it out like that? Without getting anything in return? He hated this to the core and was already cursing the lottery draw, too, all the way to its 18 generations of ancestors. What a scam. A big fat scam. The update system's new lottery draw, too, was different from lottery draw, 1. For lottery draw, 1, although there were chances that he would receive empty treasure chests, but in the one year of playing lottery draw, 1, he had only received those treasure chests once or twice. However, for lottery draw, 2, it could be seen just from the previous draws that the empty icon would appear once after every consumption and stats category icons. There were even some cases where two empty icons appeared twice in a row. Based on what was observed, the chances of getting an empty reward was really too large. Just like today, with his luck, he had done everything in vain. A good 20 million worth of reputation points were gone just like that. In the past, whenever Zhong Yi played the lottery draw, even though there were cases when he had failed to get anything, overall, his luck was still on the better side. For example, he had gotten the rarer special category items which allowed him to purchase items from the merchant shop quite a few times. The chances of landing on the special category was only a few percentage points. On top of that, even though he had not received any good prizes at the beginning, it would usually end up with him getting something that wasn't too bad. But today, Zhong Yi had finally made a huge loss, as luck did not seem to be with him at all. It was time to stop. This experience left him with too much apprehension. Zhong Yi clicked on the screen and went to Lottery Draw, 1's menu instead. Although the prizes here were not as good as Lottery Draw, 2's items and were miles apart in quality, Lottery Draw, 1, was much safer. The chances of not getting a prize was very low, so he could still get something from here and not just waste his reputation points. In times of poor luck, Zhong Yi did not hesitate and chose the lower grade lottery drawer instead. It cost 100,000 per play. Soon, the needle on the wheel started spinning. One round. Five rounds. Ten rounds. It started slowing down and the likely outcome was also getting clearer. When Zhong Yi saw the needle was slowing down at the stats category which was quite a large area, he considered for a moment, thinking about how he had hardly ever increased stakes for this category of prizes. 
his reputation points were mainly spent on the skills category of prizes and he had neglected the stats category all this while. Wanting to balance out his stats with the previous items like the fruit of charm or fruit of growth which weren't bad items, he decided and immediately put in the additional stakes. How much should he add? Why not a hundred stakes? He confirmed his additional stakes and spent another 10 million reputation points. Finally, the needle continued spinning at a very slow pace and eventually stopped in the stats category area. A rush of 101 treasure chests, small, spilled out from the interface for him. Zhong Yi was not too interested to know what he had received as he felt that anything would be good enough for him, as long as it wasn't empty. Open. Opening up the treasure chest, a glow emitted out from within. Fruit of Agility, X101, takes effect after consumption, increases agility of user. It was this again? The Fruit of Agility again? Zhong Yi remembered that he had received this item previously just before he had decided to do the system upgrade. He had gotten 20 of it at that time, so if he ate the ones he got today, he would have increased his agility by 121 fruits. This item was not exactly useless, but it didn't seem to mean much either. John Yeast nearly cried. How terrible. Today's lottery draws were all really terrible, but what could he do about it? It's not like he could ask for a refund after playing it, so he just held back his tears and ate all of the fruits of agility one by one. He had tested this item before after eating it the last time. To be clear, this item did not really increase agility in the traditional sense of the word, but mainly increased a person's reaction speed instead. As it turned out, after eating these 101 fruits of agility, Zhong Yi moved his arm and felt that he was much more agile than before. His movement seemed lighter as his body completed a move almost immediately after the brain had issued the command. Compared to a normal person, he was really much quicker, though the increase in speed was so minute that it wouldn't be noticeable to the naked eye. Hi, forget it. Every little thing mattered. Besides, who knew if this agility would help him some time in the future? Based on his experience and real-world situations, every time after he had received an item in the lottery drawer, no matter how trashy an item it was, it would always turn out to be helpful and practical for him. It was only a matter of knowing when to use it or whether it was used in the right situation or not. Zhong Yi consoled himself and ended the lottery drawer. Right now, he was only left with a miserable 1 million reputation points so he decided he would probably keep it just in case of an emergency. Chapter 627 The Olive Branch Held Out by Central TV It was pretty late. On a moonless night. Bored, Zhong Yi was busily clicking the mouse as he read the news online. He was feeling a bit unusual because he had eaten a hundred plus fruit of agility. In the past, he was used to his old body's natural reaction speed but now his reflexes had increased by manyfold. In the split second after his brain gave orders, his body made the movements. The results were such that when Zhong Yi was probably just thinking of moving the mouse cursor, his hand already moved. He was still not used to the speed as it was much too fast and caught him off guard. Around him, Zhong Yi felt that there were a few people who could reach this kind of fast reaction speed. For example, Big Saber Bro, Fan Yingyun, the world-class hacker. Zhong Yi had witnessed Big Saber Bro's reflexes before during the battle between her and the enemy hacker, so she could also likely achieve such fast reaction speeds. And then there was Ario I mean, the Chinese martial arts expert. She could probably do it too. However, this was only Zhong Yi's assumption since he had not really seen Ario I mean using her actual martial arts. Normally, old Ario only caused a small ruckus and did not really reveal her true ability in front of outsiders. That was why Zhong Yi did not know what old Ario's true abilities were, so he could only make a guess. No matter what, the reaction speed of the two of them definitely surpassed many average people but they were used to their reaction speeds, as they were naturally gifted or probably trained bit by bit in later days. But Zhong Yi was not like that. The agility skill that he learned in the blink of an eye needed some time to be digested. There was movement on the bed. Zhong Yi. Chen Chen suddenly sat up sleepily. Zhong Yi looked over and said, What's the matter why aren't you asleep yet? After he finished speaking, he was a little stunned as even though he spoke like he usually did, his reaction speed had increased multiple times. His speech also became faster just like his movements. 
he only used less than a second, or the blink of an eye, to finish his sentence. It was so fast that even he could not clearly hear what he had just said. How inconvenient! His mouth was moving way too fast. His thoughts almost could not keep up with his mouth. Zhong Yi tried very hard to slow down his speech. What's the matter? What are you calling me for? Chen Chen said as she fought her droopy eyelids, Zhong Yi, go to sleep. Zhong Yi acknowledged, I'm not tired or in a rush to sleep yet. Let me read some more news for now. Chen Chen repeated, Zhong Yi, go to sleep. Zhong Yi said, just go to sleep. I didn't switch on any sound so it won't disturb you at all. Hurry up and go to sleep. You still have to go to school tomorrow. Gradually, his talking speed increased again. Zhong Yi felt helpless at this and purposely tried to slow it down a bit. Don't bother me. I'll sleep after midnight. A moment later, Chen Chen went back to bed and fell asleep again. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi continued to read the news and think about his own matters. After a while, as he was thinking hard about his career plans from here, he suddenly noticed a small figure walking wobbly toward him. It was Chen Chen. Zhong Yi was surprised. Zhong Yi saw Chen Chen holding his downfilled pillow walking clumsily to the front of his computer desk. Her eyes were almost closed and she looked very drowsy. After that, she pulled a small chair over and climbed onto it to sit down. Then she placed the pillow just beside the laptop and fell asleep after putting her head down. Zhong Yi was speechless, what are you doing? Sleep talking Chen Chen let out a mutter. He, you should go and sleep on the bed. Zhong Yi said, I've given you such a nice bed to sleep on but you still want to come here and lie on the desk. Get up, get up, don't sleep like that. When tomorrow comes, you'll suffer from back pains due to stiff neck. Saying that, he gave Chen Chen a few nudges to wake her. Chen Chen sat up holding her pillow. Zhong Yi said helplessly, take it that I succumb to you. All right, all right, will it be fine if I turn off the computer? I'll also sleep now. He stretched out his hands and carried Chen Chen over to the bed, then covered her with a blanket and said, go to sleep now. He grabbed some blankets and coverlets, went to the sofa, and lay down on it. Five minutes passed. Ten minutes. Just as Zhong Yi was falling asleep, he felt the cushion beneath his legs moving and he sat up in shock. Then he realized Chen Chen who was hugging the pillow had moved slowly towards him again. Zhong Yi had already occupied the whole length of the sofa as it was not big enough, and he could not even straighten his legs. Chen Chen sat on the armrest of the sofa, and laid down while hugging the pillow with her back on the armrest. Her little head was like an eggplant dangling off the plant, and looked like it would fall off at any moment. Zhong Yi was totally defeated by this sight, what are you trying to do? Chen Chen did not say anything as she was extremely sleepy. Didn't I already switch off the computer? Zhong Yi said, why are you squeezing in when there is hardly any space left? If you're not going to sleep in the bed, then I'll take it. Chen Chen was still motionless. Zhong Yi glanced at her, coming to a realization, and said, do you need someone beside you so that you can fall asleep? Although the little kid did not reply Zhong Yi knew what to do. He, she should have said so. And here he was wondering why she kept asking him to go to bed or coming towards him, making Zhong Yi not know how to react. Previously, when Chen Chen lived with her aunt, old Rao would sleep with Chen Chen on the same bed. Now that her aunt went out of town, she was unused to having no one beside her. After all, she was still only an eight-year-old child. Zhong Yi carried her again and said, come, let's sleep on the bed. This time you should sleep properly and not wander around anymore. Walking towards the bedside, he pulled aside the blanket and covered Chen Chen with it. Then Zhong Yi took off his slippers and laid down as well. He then muttered to himself, he, the bed is the most comfortable place to sleep. Chen Chen rolled over and said, Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi yawned and asked, what's the matter again? Chen Chen said sleepily, tell me a story. Whoa, you acting like a lord now. Your uncle Zhong is sleepy and almost falling asleep, and yet you still want me to tell a story. Besides, I thought you didn't like my types of stories and even said that they were childish before. Zhong Yi grunted. Chen Chen said, Zhong Yi, tell me a story. Zhong Yi said, I don't care. Zhong Yi. Fine, stop calling, what do you want to hear? 
Anything. I'm scared when people say anything. Let me think a little. Never mind, I'll tell you a new story. Zhong Yi patted Chin Chin's small head and then said, The story is called Cinderella. A long time ago, there was a wife of a rich man. She had a serious illness. During her last moments, she asked for her only daughter to be by her side and told her, Dear daughter, when I die, I will protect and bless you from the nine springs. Saying that, she closed her eyes and passed away. He didn't know if she was asleep or listening. Zhong Yi gradually slowed down his storytelling, and then fell asleep at some point in time as well. The next day. Early in the morning. Chun Chun's voice sounded in his ears, Zhong Yi, wake up, I'm hungry. Zhong Yi pulled her away and said, don't disturb me, let me sleep a while longer. Chen Chen continued to push at him and said, Zhong Yi, I'm hungry. Zhong Yi forced his eyes open and looked at his watch impatiently. Seeing that it was only 6.30 a.m., he closed his eyes and covered himself with the blanket immediately and said, let me sleep for another 10 minutes. Chen Chen shouted at him in her childish voice, Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi ignored her and continued sleeping soundly. When he opened his eyes again, it was almost 7 a.m. His nose caught a whiff of a fragrant aroma. He could make out that it was composed of two aromas with a quick analysis. It was the fragrance of soup dumplings and something else that smelled like egg drop soup. Yes, that must be it. Gururu, a sound rumbled from his stomach. He got up and saw Chen Chen standing on a wooden stool, in the process of cooking in the open kitchen. She was stirring something in the pot with a pair of chopsticks and adding what seemed like MSG into it. Zhong Yi got out from bed and exclaimed, Yo, so it's really egg drop soup. Did I still have eggs in my house? Good. Not bad, you did well. Oh right, there's still soup dumplings on the table? Where did you buy them? Chen Chen said unhappily, outside of the district. Zhong Yi asked, where did you get the money? Chen Chen said with a sullen face, I got it from your wallet. Zhong Yi hurriedly went forward to help out and said, look at that sullen face of yours. Are you angry? After turning off the heat, Chen Chen took a towel and wiped her hands clean like a small adult. She started to serve the soup, and although her movement was clumsy, there were no spills. After serving her own portion, she ignored Zhong Yi's portion and jumped right off the small wooden stool. She said angrily, Zhong Yi, you don't have the bearings of an adult at all. Zhong Yi found an excuse and said, isn't it quite nice that we can share the chores like this? Generally, Uncle Zhong will take care of you, but when I'm tired, you will take care of me. Chen Chen shot a glance at him. Ha ha. He, this soup smells nice, let me have a bowl too. Zhong Yi did not stand on ceremony and ladled some soup for himself. Chen Chen had previously cooked once before, so Zhong Yi knew that she could cook. Although she was still not good at it and even needed a stool to reach the stove, this little kid's cooking skills were still good enough. At least it was much better than Zhong Yi's, and could be considered that she had inherited Rao I means cooking skills. Come on, let's eat. However, Chen Chen was already helping herself to all those soup dumplings. In the blink of an eye, three soup dumplings were already gone. Zhong Yi anxiously said, leave some for me. Chen Chen ignored him and continued stuffing the food into her mouth, saying, I bought it. That was my money. Zhong Yi also moved his chopsticks forward to snatch, but when he realized he was going to fail, he even resorted to using his hands to grab the last three soup dumplings. Chen Chen was ready to fight him for them. Zhong Yi, give them to me. Ha ha! Zhong Yi chuckled heartily. Such a big commotion during breakfast, as both of them nearly end up fighting each other for the food, was still considerably very fun and enjoyable on the whole. After the meal, Zhong Yi was humming a song as he sent Chen Chen to school. He parked his car on the road across from the school and said, All right, go to school now. Chen Chen opened the car door with a struggle and got out of the car. Zhong Yi reminded her, don't be naughty, listen to the teachers. Chen Chen turned around and asked, will you come to pick me up in the afternoon? Zhong Yi smiled and said, yes, I'll be coming. When Chen Chen turned around, she saw two of her classmates and followed them. Together they crossed the road and went beyond the school gates. The little one's popularity was also getting better with each passing day. When Chen Chen's figure vanished from his sight, 
Zhong Yi suddenly had the thought that it was actually quite interesting to have a child at home. Time to go home then. It was time to go back home to continue this morning's sleep again. When he was about to drive off, even before he could step on the accelerator, there was a dong 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 sound. A middle-aged man was standing outside and knocking on the glass window with a smile. Zhong Yi lowered the car window and asked, What's the matter? The middle-aged man asked, Are you Zhong Yi? Yes, I am. Zhong Yi thought he was just someone who wanted his signature. But it turned out that the middle-aged man had taken out a business card to give to him. He said, My child is also studying in number two experimental primary school, but he is in sixth grade. I heard about the matter at school from my child yesterday, and thought that you would be sending yours to school today as well. So I actually waited out here and indeed saw you sending your child to school as I had expected. So, initially I was supposed to give you a call this morning during work, but it's even better that I managed to meet you here instead. That would save us a lot of time in coordinating a meeting together. Zhong Yi took the business card to have a look. Jiang Yuan Deputy Director, Central TV Department 1. This person was one of the leaders of Central TV? Zhong Yi was stunned with surprise as he opened the door and got out of the car. He formally shook hands with him and said, so it's Deputy Director Jiang. Jiang Yuan smiled and said, then I'll get straight to the point. Central TV Department 1 intends to invite you to join our television station. I wonder if you would be interested in joining us. Huh? Central TV Department 1 inviting me to join them? The first thought that came to Zhong Yi's mind was one of disbelief. Chapter 628 Signing the Contract with Central TV Beside the primary school. A small coffee house along Nanxinhua Avenue. At this time, the coffee house was not in operation yet as their opening time was a little later in the morning. The staff were doing the accounts inside, but the door was left unlocked. Jiang Yuan pushed open the door and asked, Are you open? A waitress said, Sorry, we're not open yet. Zhong Yi followed from behind and went inside, saying, We just need to borrow a place to sit and discuss something. That won't do, we're, the waitress didn't finish. The coffee house owner who was behind her immediately recognized him and said, Ayo, isn't that Zhong Yi? To what do we owe the honor? We're open, we're open, please have a seat inside with your friend. Okay, thanks so much, boss, Zhong Yi said with a smile. The boss answered with a big smile, don't need to thank me. You've already graced our little shop with your presence. May we take a picture with you later? So that I can put it up on our wall and have a chance to brag to other people. Zhong Yi said happily, sure, no problem. The coffee was served very quickly. The coffee house owner said, I won't bother the two of you then. The boss left. Zhong Yi and Jiang Yuan were seated at a quiet corner in the coffee house. Jiang Yuan smiled as he drank his coffee and said, Well, the coffee tastes rather good. If not for you, we wouldn't have had a chance to have coffee here today. Then he quickly changed the topic. So, how about it? Are you interested in the matter that I brought up earlier? Zhong Yi did not answer directly but instead asked, Why did you ask me? Jiang Yuan also asked, Why not you? Zhong Yi said, being invited to join your television station is an honor and of course I would be interested. Who hasn't heard of Central TV Department 1's name before? It is the big brother of the domestic television station industry and whether in terms of audience coverage, qualifications, or experience, it is the number one in the country, the mothership of all television stations, so why would I not be interested? But in the past, I created some issues at the crosstalk competition and caused my relationship with Central TV to become quite bad. I don't suppose there are too many people there who have good impressions of me. Back then, Zhong Yi had created a storm at Central TV Department 11 where the crosstalk competition was held and caused a big mess of things. The Central TV staff should understand that matter the most, so why would they invite him to join them this time? Zhong Yi was desperate for a job this time and was hoping that a good television station would look for him to join them, but out of all the satellite channel television stations that he had considered as a possibility, it was the one he didn't that came to look for him. The thought and idea of it never once crossed his mind as he had already identified it an impossible situation early on. However, no one could predict the unpredictable, and with most matters being so uncertain, 
The television station that Zhong Yi had not expected to make the move for him turned out to be the one that was offering him the olive branch now. When Jiang Yuan heard this, he laughed a little and answered, I've heard about the crawlstalk competition at Department 11 before, but I'm not too sure of the details as Department 1 is independent of Department 11. We do not share the same team, and even our office locations are different, so we basically do not have any direct contact with them. As a result, how they view you is totally not of any concern to us at Department 1. That is the first point. Second, the reason we want to invite you to join us is not because of anything other than that you're popular and capable. With those qualities, of course we would like to bring you into our ranks. It's really that simple, though honestly, your promotion into the B-list celebrity rankings and the Do You Remember program that you sold to Beijing Television were the key reasons for it. We are confident of your program planning abilities. Zhong Yi gave a noncommittal nod at that. Jiang Yuan said to him, I don't know whether there are other satellite channels in contact with you at the moment, but if there are, then I urge you to seriously consider Central TV. Everyone who can see will know that satellite channels are definitely the best out there, especially on the forefront of variety and entertainment programs. The viewership ratings are all considerably very high, and if you just compare based on these ratings alone, then the ones who lead these statistics are all the satellite channels. But as that is only data on the superficial level, you should know this as an industry insider as well. Even if we do not look at the viewership ratings of those variety programs, if we judge them based on their influence and comprehensive strengths of one channel per television station, then our central TV department one is clearly the leader in our domestic market. That is without a question. Zhong Yi did not doubt this. He too knew that it was true. Central TV Department 1 had a monopoly of the viewership ratings just with news simulcast alone. Its viewer rating was not something that could simply be described with a zero-point rating. When it got a high enough viewership rating, it could even soar into a 10-point rating or more. Even if the viewership ratings of some of the satellite channel's programs were added up together, they still couldn't outperform the ratings of news simulcast. As all the other satellite channels were required to broadcast news simulcast as well, the program would be shown with the logo of Central TV Department 1 in the top right corner. From a certain perspective, Central TV Department 1 was just like an unresolved bug one living on in the system of all the other satellite channels. It even had ownership over the terrifying program that had the craziest viewership ratings the Central TV Spring Festival Gala, which could easily hit crazy viewership ratings of over 20-30%. Two and then, Central TV Department 1 also had the most outstanding and one of the top-ranked interview programs in the industry, together with the most excellent team, resources, and the widest area coverage reaching to faraway places in the remote mountains that even Beijing Television or Hyun Television could not cover. As long as there was some sort of television signal, even if there were very few channels or a place with only one television set, the channel that would reach such places could only be Central TV Department 1. This was the effect of an overwhelming and superior policy making from the government, something that all the other satellite channels would never be able to compete on in their lifetimes. Yes. Even though Central TV had been going downhill in the past two years as it gradually lost some of the interest of viewers. But the big brother would always be the big brother, it was something that no one could change, even after a hundred years. Why? There was no why, it was just so because its name was Central TV Department 1. Jiang Yuan said, Central TV is the largest platform in the industry and also your best choice. I believe you know that without needing me to explain further. Recently, in the past few years, Central TV Department 1's market share in the area of variety programs has been on a decline. The response to the programs has been tepid, so we would like for you to join us to help us create a program on Central TV that would recover its lost ground from the past few years. The program that you casually created for Beijing television without much of your handling has already reached a viewership rating, between 0.7% and 0.8%. Our team believes that if we give you a bigger platform to showcase your works on, then your new program will be sure to get a better reputation than Do You Remember which is already very well received by the audiences. When Zhong Yi finished listening to him, he said, Can I ask about something else? Did you all look for me to only handle the program planning? Of course not. 
Jian Yuan gave a wave of his hands at that and continued, although we have a lot of talented and elite hosts in Central TV. For example, the Spring Festival Gala hosts, every one of them are considered to be the top in the industry. Some are less popular than you while there are also others who are more well-known than you, but our Central TV hosts are generally more inclined towards galas, news, or interview programs, meaning that their style of hosting is more serious and formal. So if we wanted them to host in a funny and entertaining manner, it would not be done perfect or well at all. The audience's image of them has already been fixed, so not many of them can cross over to this style of hosting. But you're different. You can handle serious programs like Lecture Room or funny programs like Zhong Yi's talk show. This is your ability that we identified as what we liked. And you don't have any shortcomings when it comes to the switching of hosting styles either. That's why we not only wish for you to handle planning for a new program, but we would also like you to be the host or a guest celebrity on it. Zhong Yi was actually already quite moved by the offer. It wasn't anything that was explainable, but just based on the name of the satellite channel itself. Central TV Department 1 was basically just too attractive. Jian Yuan continued, Central TV Department 1 will soon have a program slot free for broadcast every Thursday at 9 p.m. Thursdays? Zhong Yi repeated the key word. Jian Yuan said, perhaps Thursday can no longer be considered a primetime slot in the traditional sense, but the Thursday evening variety slot still has a very large market and the audience base is still there. Zhong Yi understood this. Central TV was just like a large ship with treasures, but that would naturally mean that they would not give a newcomer like Zhong Yi a share of it without seeing his performance. It was unlikely that they would give the Friday and weekend time slots to him as that would be too much of a risk. However, a Thursday evening slot was still considerably good. After all, this was not some small-time television station but Central TV they were talking about. A Thursday evening slot would still be better than a weekend primetime slot at Beijing Television, so Zhong Yi would surely still be very satisfied with such an offer. Jiang Yuan looked at him and said, I believe you can see our sincerity in this offer. If you have any thoughts or requests, you can bring them up too and we can discuss them. Zhong Yi nodded and said, I do actually have two requests. The first is, if I join Central TV Department 1, then for this new program, I must be the executive director and have the final say on the operations and production of the entire program. Jiang Yuan ruminated for a moment then said, that would be fine, but we would want to have an executive producer from our side. Is that okay? That shouldn't be a problem. Zhong Yi then brought up his second request, saying, second, I must be able to retain the copyright for the program that I create including its name and format. Jiang Yuan gave him a look and asked, why do you want the copyright? If the program's viewer ratings are good, then the program team would get bonus payouts too. We will put that into the contract, so how much are you looking at? Or perhaps we could bundle it together with your salary, that's fine too. However, Zhong Yi said, I don't require a bonus payout clause. It's just like a program production company selling their programs to a television station. I'm sure you can understand that I want our deal to be done in this manner too, except that I will be using Central TV's resources and facilities to do the program, which is why I am willing to give this program to your station free of charge and not ask for a copyright fee. We will carry out the other aspects of the program like any other program without any additional differences in the handling, but the copyright must remain in my control. If there is a decision to do a second or third season, or if a foreign television station wants to buy its copyrights, then I will be the one to decide whether to sell or not. Jiang Yuan was rendered quite speechless by this, so he said, this is the first time I've heard of such a request. Zhong Yi laughed and said, this is always how I've been doing my programs. Since I planned the program, then naturally the copyright would belong to me. This is the most important priority for me, above other things like salary, bonus, whatever. As long as those aren't too little, I'm generally fine with it. Since I retain control of the copyright, I know that I will have to take a step back on the salary. His programs were all very precious to him, as using one now would mean one less resource for him in the future. Zhong Yi would not accept it if he worked hard on replicating a successful program from his previous world and brought it to this world, and ended up being kicked off from the television station after they had gotten the copyrights to the format, and went on to do the next few seasons without him. 
so he knew that he had to be clear about this from the beginning like he did with his Zhong Yi's talk show, which worked on a similar contractual agreement. This was the reason why Weiwa online television station did not get another host to continue working on the same show as that was, impossible without the copyright. This was a program that only Zhong Yi could use, unless they bought it from him for a sum of money or if Zhong Yi allowed them to use it for free on the basis of friendship and past relationships. As for Lecture Room, that was an exception since the program was first proposed by the people at BTV Arts Channel. Zhong Yi had only used their framework and modified it a little, so there was no talk of any copyright beforehand and neither could he talk about it. That was why BTV Arts Channel had still continued making Lecture Room even though the show was essentially already a dead one. Jiang Yuan said, please give it some consideration again. Our central TV department one has never signed this sort of a contract with a host before. It's impossible that the copyright would given to anyone other than the station itself. Zhong Yi said, since I am the program planner, executive director, and host, this program can be considered as fully my work after it is completed, and so, the copyright should rightfully belong to me. Therefore, it's also impossible that I would give the ownership of the copyright to anyone else. Jiang Yuan frowned and said, but the production team is made up entirely of our staff, and besides the marketing and broadcasting fees also contribute to a part of the costs. Which is why I am providing the program for free, without charging anything for the production and planning fees, Zhong Yi stated. On this issue, the two of them had a disagreement. Jiang Yuan wanted to have a one-time settlement with Zhong Yi on the program planning fees, but Zhong Yi did not want it except to retain his copyrights for the program. Then, Jiang Yuan stood up and suggested, how about this? Let me call my management first, since this is the first time something like this has been brought up. I'm unable to make a decision regarding this by myself. Sure. Zhong Yi nodded. Jiang Yuan walked out of the coffee house. Five minutes passed. Ten minutes passed. Finally, Jiang Yuan returned, sat down, and took a sip of coffee before saying, the management has agreed, but have some requests too. The copyright can be yours, but any profits and generated benefits that the program makes during its course at Central TV, such as advertising fees, among others, will be retained by Central TV and not paid out to you. Since we will be using our resources, facilities, and funds to promote the show, we will surely need to get some form of compensation. This would include any types of benefits that occur as a result from its run on Central TV. Zhong Yi considered for a moment and then raised up his head to say, that will be fine. Jiang Yuan also revealed a smile as he stood up, putting his hand out. So we have a deal then? Yes. It's a deal. Zhong Yi also put out his and shook his hand. Jiang Yuan said, welcome aboard Central TV Department 1. We'll all be looking forward to your contributions. Same day. Central TV had quickly written up the contract. This contract could be considered one of the most complicated ones that Central TV Department 1 had with a host before, and also one of the lesser seen types in the industry. Within, it not only included the terms for a one-year duration, planning, and production responsibilities, it also included a list of the copyright and restrictions outside of the copyright, etc. It was not that Zhong Yi wanted to be arrogant. But it was better to be clear now than having disagreements later. After all, Zhong Yi had been through quite a lot of troublesome situations in the past, so he felt that it was better to be blunt upfront to prevent unnecessary issues in the future. After Zhong Yi went through the contract several times to check for any discrepancies, he finally put pen to paper and signed it. Chapter 629 Return of the Jinx Later that afternoon, Zhong Yi was waiting at Nanxinhua Avenue for Chen Chen to out of school. On the internet, a picture of Zhong Yi and Jiang Yuan, taken in the morning at the coffee house where the two of them had their meeting and were seen shaking hands, was leaked. Almost immediately, it caught people's attention. Several social media news blogs started to report about it as others picked up the news and reported a constant stream of updates. Secret meeting between Central TV Department 1's deputy director and Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi to join Central TV? Shocking. Central TV Department 1's ruthless move, joining hands with Zhong Yi. Central TV's big move. Is Zhong Yi going to join? Central TV, being the big brother of all domestic television stations, operated in a way that was traditional in style. 
Zhong Yi was an oddity of the entertainment industry whose style did not abide by the rules. This cooperation between the two who vastly differed in styles, akin to heaven and earth, had obviously left many citizens unable to imagine it, so when the photo and speculation of rumors came out, it immediately caught countless people by surprise. It can't be? They can still work together in that kind of situation? Didn't Zhong Yi offend Central TV Department 11 in the past? After the recent annual crosstalk competition was wrecked by Zhong Yi and Yao Jiantsai, I heard that many of the major satellite channels already blacklisted Zhong Yi from the industry and labeled him a troublemaking master. He can accomplish many things and exceed expectations but at the same time also create trouble that is too much to handle. Central TV Department 1 is not the same as Department 11. I'm dumbfounded. That can't be true, right? The picture doesn't look like it's been photoshopped. Is Central TV really so gutsy? They dare to use Zhong Yi? I feel it's very good. Central TV has made an extremely wise move. Likewise, I also think that way. Although Zhong Yi's reputation isn't too good within the industry, he is really capable and has real abilities too. Central TV's variety programs have gradually grown worse beginning more than 10 years ago just because they were too old-fashioned, and refused to develop with the times like some other satellite channels. They even refused to follow those satellite channels that bought program copyrights from overseas at high prices to refresh the market. That is why they're getting increasingly out of touch with the market trends and losing their viewers. If Zhong Yi really joins Central TV Department 1, it will surely be a breath of fresh air. And he can bring an outstanding program to them. At the very least, it should be similar to Do You Remember, right? As long as it can get a nationwide viewership ratings of about 1%, or maybe even less than that, maybe around 0.9%, Central TV Department 1 would surely be satisfied. How many variety programs these days can even exceed 1% viewer ratings? The market share is shrinking with all the television stations pitted against each other. The viewership share in the modern context is no longer as glorious as a decade ago. Waiting for Zhong Yi's joining. I think teacher Zhong doesn't have a job currently, right? For him, there should be no better choice than Central TV Department 1. There's no other platform bigger than this. The main issue now is whether this news is real or fake. Rumors were flying everywhere, as many people and industry insiders paid close attention to this matter. Zhong Yi was no longer the nameless rookie without any experience. He was now a B-list celebrity and someone who had the ability to affect the pattern of a television station's viewership ratings. His job movements were surely being looked at closely by countless pairs of eyes now and even more so now that there was a rumor of him joining Central TV Department 1 where the quality of the hosts was the highest in the industry, the alarm bell for the end of classes had still not yet rung. But Zhong Yi's cell phone was already ringing in the car. It was Zhong Yi's old colleague from Beijing radio station and the current Central Radio Station's DJ, Tian Bin. He was the first person to call him, Zhong Yi, what's your current situation? Zhong Yi laughed and said, old Tian. Tian Bin exclaimed, is the news that's being spread online real? Did Deputy Director Jian go to look for you? As there was nothing to keep under wraps, Zhong Yi acknowledged, yeah, he came to find me this morning. I've already signed the contract too, so I'll be starting work formally tomorrow. Tian Bin said, so it's true? Zhong Yi said, yeah. Tian Bin said, whoa, I'll have to congratulate you then. Zhong Yi replied, from tomorrow onwards, we will be colleagues again. Tian Bin said, come on, I'm just a host at the radio station. You're the host of Central TV, and even a host at Central TV Department 1. So how can we even be considered colleagues? At most, we can say that we work for the same corporation. Heh, seems like you have gotten some good success in this past half a year. You're getting more and more popular. I'm really happy for you. Zhong Yi gratefully said, all thanks to you, old Tian. If not for the fact that we kept getting into arguments at Beijing radio station, I'd probably not have resigned yet and still be struggling at the radio station. Tian Bin laughed, don't mention those trivial matters of the past. If we did not get into arguments like we did, we would not have this kind of a relationship now. This is called, from an exchange of blows friendship grows. Zhong Yi exclaimed and said sarcastically, 
it's not considered from an exchange of blows friendship grows because you're the one who's always taking the beating. When did you ever beat me in an argument? Hearing those words, Tian Bin nearly vomited blood. He said, how have I never beat you? I can't pretend that I didn't hear your words. Since you brought it up, we must talk about this thoroughly. Ha ha ha. The two of them bantered for a while more before finally hanging up. After that, his mom called next. His mother said, son, are you joining Central TV Department 1? John Yi acknowledged, I've just signed the contract and was about to inform you and dad about it. Good. 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 His mother exclaimed consecutively three times. Like I said, there are surely people who know what's good for them. Look at this, look at this, Central TV Department 1 has even come looking for my son now. It's the biggest TV channel in the country. All right, you go and do your own things, I won't disturb you. I'll quickly give your dad a call to give him something to cheer about. The moment that call disconnected, the third call came. This time it was Yao Jintsai, you're going to Central TV? Zhong Yi said, you know about it too. I've just heard some news about it, have you signed the contract yet? Yao Jintsai asked. Zhong Yi said, I did. Yao Jintsai said, what are the terms? Zhong Yi said, just the usual conditions but the contract is rather short. It's only for a year. Yao Jintsai said, that's already very good. I was wondering why you didn't choose to join Beijing Television. So it turned out that you've already found a better place. Beijing Television really does not compare with Central TV in any way. Zhong Yi said, I didn't have an offer before that. It was only today that someone from Central TV approached me. Since I felt that the platform wasn't too bad and they were also willing to give me quite a good extent of authority, I accepted it. Yao Jintsai said, the platform isn't too bad? What? It's better than not bad. John Yi, ha ha, it's passable. After hanging up from old Yao's call, John Yi thought for a while and simply decided to call up some of his close friends to inform them about this. For example, Dong Shanshan, Hu Fei, not to mention Wu Zuching as well. Now that he had joined Central TV, he was considered to be back in old Wu's territory as Central TV's direct higher authority was the SARFT. He, strictly speaking, as long as Zhong Yi was in the entertainment industry, then he would be under the overseeing authority of SARFT's deputy chief, Old Wu. Because the SARFT basically encompassed all areas of the entertainment industry. A bunch of phone calls were made and time passed very quickly. The alarm bells for the end of classes rang out from the school. Shortly after, the main gates of number two experimental primary school opened and the children gradually walked out as the parents piled forward to receive their children. There were too many people and Zhong Yi certainly did not go forward immediately. He only wore his sunglasses and got out from the car, waiting by the side of the road. Suddenly, he saw Chen Chen's figure and motioned for her to come over. He opened the door on the other side of the car. When the little kid came over, he lifted her onto the passenger seat, then said, fasten your seatbelt. Chen Chen fastened her seatbelt. Zhong Yi walked back to his side of the car and drove away. While driving, he said, how was your performance today? Did you get criticized by the teachers? Chen Chen said with a straight face, no. Hum, then your performance wasn't too bad. It wasn't known what metric Zhong Yi was measuring this by. Chen Chen. Zhong Yi recalled something and said, by the way, I'm starting work at Central TV tomorrow. There's no school for you tomorrow, right? Don't you go running around by yourself at home. Chen Chen said nothing. Zhong Yi looked at her and asked, Are you going to be fine by yourself? Chen Chen said, Cook for me. I still have to go to work. Don't you already know how to cook? Zhong Yi said. Chen Chen said, My aunt told you to take care of me, so you have to cook for me, Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi blinked and said, Why don't I order delivery for you instead? You can open the door when the delivery person comes, that won't do, it's not safe for you as a child. Then I'll get a neighbor to take care of the meals for you. You can go to the house across the way, Sister Sun's place, tomorrow afternoon to eat. It will be fine since she is also renting your aunt's place. If not, I'll get my parents take care of you for a few days. 
Chen Chen made a sullen face and said nothing. Zhong Yi knew this little kid was getting angry at him, so he said, Must I be always be by your side? Chen Chen said, Yes. Hi, let's see how it goes tomorrow. Zhong Yi was also feeling very helpless. Chen Chen suddenly said, Zhong Yi, I will go to work with you. Zhong Yi turned the steering wheel as the car swung greatly to one side, ah? I have to bring a child with me to work on my first day at Central TV. Won't the people there surely be gossiping about this then? No, no, that won't do. Chen Chen immediately said, then you will stay at home to accompany me. But I have to work. Zhong Yi stared at her. Chen Chen replied, then you will bring me along to work. Zhong Yi didn't know how to react and said, good lord, you're totally putting the blame on me now. All right, I'll consider it when I get back home and we'll talk about it tomorrow. He drove them both home. After entering the house, Zhong Yi carried Chen Chen and gave her soap to wash her hands. After that, he made a call for delivery to be delivered. When Chen Chen said that her school bag was dirtied today, Zhong Yi unwillingly took it into the bathroom to clean it for her. He was just like a full-time nanny now. At night. Central TV's official website has officially released the good news confirming that the famous host, Zhong Yi, had joined Central TV Department 1. Central TV Department 1's new program would be planned by Zhong Yi and was in the preparation and production stages, ready to take over Thursday's 9 p.m. slot soon. The moment this news was released, it caused an uproar everywhere. So it's true. Holy shit. This really isn't a rumor? Central TV has really invited teacher Zhong Yi to join them? Central TV takes a traditional position while Zhong Yi has always had a different way of thinking compared to normal people. Can he display his abilities over there? Or will he not be accustomed to the new place? Chen Yi is also a pillar of Central TV Department 1. Are they going to come face to face with each other soon? They're going to have a real competition with their viewership ratings? That is Chen Yi's territory. With teacher Zhong still a newcomer to the station, his program's viewer rating will surely not be able to outperform Chen Yi's. Besides, Zhong Yi only has the Thursday evening slot and not some primetime slot. It will sure be incomparable to Chen Yi who is a senior at Central TV. Chen Yi has everything laid out for him already and has the advantage between the two of them. That may not be the case. Right, this is Zhong Yi we're talking about and that name of his already represents miracles. Really looking forward to teacher Zhong Yi's new program. You're finally making a comeback. You've made us fans wait for such a long time. Congratulations to teacher Zhong for advancing to Central TV. Tossing flowers. It's the return of the jinx. I've got a strong feeling that something interesting will happen soon. Ha ha ha, there will always be drama wherever teacher Zhong goes. Let's see how big a commotion Zhong Yi will cause at Central TV Department 1 this time. Chapter 630 Executive Director Zhong Yi Saturday At Central TV Tower As this place was next to Yuantan Park, which was also known as Bay Lake, the air here was noticeably much cooler and refreshing than other places. When the breeze was blowing, it felt most relaxing. Many tourists were buying tickets from the main entrance to go into the park. Some brought their children, some were here as a couple, and there was also many children from primary and secondary schools here for their field trips. The park was packed with people. The television station tower here was also a popular tourist spot in Beijing as well as allowing tourists to tour it. But of course, the central TV office area where the staff worked at and the visitors area did not overlap. The entrances for these places were also different such as the places where programs were recorded and the smaller recording studios which were located underground beside the tower area, and were not open to public. In the tower, a staff-only elevator was slowly ascending. Because the tower was constructed very early on and was considered a high-rise, the elevator's speed was also comparatively slower. In Beijing slang, this elevator was meatier than the common and smaller Beijing district building's elevators. There were only two people in the elevator, a child and an adult. Zhong Yi repeatedly badgered and asked, Do you remember what I told you? Repeat it again. Chen Chen said impatiently, No running around, no nonsense, listen to you, don't give you trouble, and greet others when I see them. 
Zhong Yi nodded at this and said, Today is uncle's first day at work, be sure to earn some brownie points for me. Don't make me lose face. If you do well today, then Sunday tomorrow I can still bring you to work. We can see the whole of the city of Beijing and even further from the observation deck upstairs. But if you're not obedient and cause trouble for me, I will leave you at home alone tomorrow. Chen Chen curled her lips and said, I know. Zhong Yi, you nag even more than my aunt. If Zhong Yi wasn't worried about leaving Chen Chen alone at home, he would never have brought her to the workplace for sure. All right, we've reached our floor, Zhong Yi said as he put out his hand in front of Chen Chen. Chen Chen looked at his hand and then put her little hand in his. When the elevator door opened, Zhong Yi pulled Chen Chen by the hand and walked out. He proceeded to the HR department to handle the joining formalities and saw Central TV Department 1's deputy director, Jiang Yuan already waiting there for him. Zhong Yi smiled and greeted, Director Jiang. Jiang Yuan nodded and said, You're here? A few people working at the HR department looked toward him. So this was the legendary Zhong Yi? Indeed, he was just like he looked on TV, really ordinary after all. If this person was seen on the streets, no one would have batted an eyelid at him, nor would anyone think that this person would have the potential to become a celebrity. However, that couldn't be further from the truth, as this person standing before them right now was not just a celebrity. He was a B-list celebrity of the entertainment circle who was ranked a little higher than one of the pillars of Central TV, Chen Yi. This was exactly what people meant by not judging a book by its cover. A. Eh? Why is there a child beside him? A few of the HR department staff members were a bit taken aback when they saw Zhong Yi holding the hand of a little girl. Whoa, whose child is that, why is she so pretty? Jiang Yuan also noticed her and asked, this is? Chen Chen automatically moved her mouth and greeted, uncle. She seemed to have taken Zhong Yi's instruction to heart. Zhong Yi was a little embarrassed. He explained, so, one of my relatives went out of town to settle some business and the little girl had no one to take care of her, so the task fell to my hands. As the child is still young, I am quite worried about leaving her at home alone. Jiang Yuan acknowledged and said, oh, all right then. The HR department staff were all a little bemused by this. Bringing a child to work on your very first day? This was truly something they'd never seen before. If it wasn't a case of the talented being bolder, then this was surely something that only Zhong Yi, a wonder of the entertainment industry, would dare do. He was truly worthy of the reputation for taking the path off the beaten track. Very quickly, the formalities were completed. Jiang Yuan called for Zhong Yi to go to his office and then asked him to have a seat. He said, Teacher Zhong, the paperwork is all completed. As of today, you're a part of Central TV Department 1. So let's skip the formalities and I'll talk about the new program first for you to have a little reference. Zhong Yi told Chen Chen to go sit outside on the guest sofa. Then he said, all right, please speak. Jiang Yuan said, I've already told you about taking over the current program slot, so you have a general idea of that already. What we need to discuss now are the details of the new program proposal. As you know, it's not easy to make something new in the variety program market now as all of the other satellite channels are also doing the same thing, and churning out similar types of programs without any creativity. Even though there are several standouts, those are all programs that have been adapted from foreign programs brought in by the other satellite channels, especially the variety programs from Korea. But as Central TV, we cannot do that, as our station's theme comes from here, after all. There are some political factors as well. Generally, we are more restricted as we cannot buy the copyright of good foreign variety programs, but we are still looking for something innovative, not blind innovation or innovation for the sake of innovation but innovation that fits the current market trends and practices. Zhong Yi said, I understand. Jiang Yuan acknowledged that and said, among the number of innovative program producers in the country now, you are one of the better ones. In this matter, you're the professional and know better than me, so I will not go over the technicalities, but I will touch on our requirements. The station does not have any restrictions on the program whether it is a traditional style variety program or reality television program or talent show program. We're fine with any of that. As long as the program is something new and has a market, we will do it. Zhong Yi asked, how about the funding? 
Jiang Yuan said, let me first hear how much you need. Zhang Yi spoke honestly, I want however much you can give. But, to be honest, I will not think it is too much no matter how much you are going to approve, because in making a good program good funding is a must. The station does not have a lack of funds, but surely we won't be able to give all that funding to you, am I right? There must be a limit. Jiang Yuan said, let's talk about the funding at a later time. I need to see your program proposal before I can decide. If it really is a good program, then it will definitely get the funding it deserves. Even if it exceeds our budget, I don't have a problem, as long as it doesn't exceed it by too much. The station urgently needs to claw its lost market share back and have a good program that can compete with the other satellite channels. It's easy to talk things over, anything can be negotiated. Zhang Yi smiled and said, with your promise, I feel reassured now. Jiang Yuan also laughed, I have to see your program proposal to feel reassured as well. Sure. I'll get it done before leaving work today, Zhang Yi bragged. Jiang Yuan was taken aback at this, so quickly. You don't need to rush as there's still some time before you take over the broadcast slot. Just give the proposal to me within the next few days and it should be fine. Haste makes waste. What we want is still the quality of the program. Zhang Yi said, don't worry, I understand. Hearing that, Jiang Yuan didn't say anything further, all right, then I'll await your project proposal. The new programs team has already been set up. They're all Central TV Department 1's elites and there's nothing to complain about in regards to their working capabilities. Well then, I still have a meeting later, so I won't join you there. Let me hook you up with one of the team's personnel, Fu Sihong. Old Fu is a veteran of our Central TV station and is very dependable. As your new program's executive producer, he is definitely the most suitable man for the job. When you meet him, take the chance to get to know him and then have a discussion with him regarding the new program. After that, he made a call. Soon after, a slightly plump middle-aged man knocked on the office door and came inside. Jiang Yuan introduced the both of them, saying, Old Fu, this is Zhong Yi. Fu Sihong looked at him and reached out his hand, saying, Hello, Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi shook his hand and said, Hello, just call me little Zhong. Jiang Yuan needed to go as he had work to take care of, so Fu Sihong and Zhong Yi also left the office together. He heard Fu Sihong tell him, Let's first go to the program team's office to have a look. I will introduce the team members to you. Sure. Zhong Yi turned around and called for Chen Chen, Let's go. Chen Chen was still leaning on the glass window and looking down at the outside, as though she did not hear a thing. Zhong Yi called out again, Chen Chen, hurry up. We're leaving. Chen Chen acknowledged him and followed him unwillingly. They took the elevator down. Downstairs, at the office area. When Fu Sihong pushed open a door that was emblazoned with the words, Central 1 Thursday 9 p.m. slot, program to be confirmed, a bright light greeted them immediately as a warm ray of sun shone on them through a row of windows inside the office. The entirety of Beijing could be seen from here as they stood at a high place looking out, with a view that would no doubt infuse people with excitement. The office area was not small either, with just the tables alone numbering around 50 to 60. There were also quite a few standalone rooms which were clearly prepared for the program team's leaders. Each of these rooms were labelled with titles such as executive producer, executive director, host, etc. There was even a lounge, a small meeting room, as well as a nursing room, breastfeeding room. It was completely kitted out. There no need to scrutinize the environment and facilities. There were not many people in the office area, just seven or eight people. Some of them were still busy packing and arranging things at their desks, clearly showing that it was their first day operating from this office as well. Producer Fu. Brother Fu. Teacher Zhong. Teacher Zhong Yi. Director Zhong. Everyone started greeting them, addressing them by all kinds of titles. Fu Sihong was not young, probably in his forties or fifties. He looked very calm and did not wear much of a smile either. He said, this is Zhong Yi, but I don't think I really need to do any introductions about him here. Then he started to introduce the staff to Zhong Yi. This is Zhong Zui, an assistant director. A thin man around 30 years of age. This is Ha Chichi, also an assistant director. A woman in her thirties. 
This is Wu Yi, the technical director. He was a bespectacled man. This is. One by one, he made the introductions to Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi shook hands with them one by one as well, smiling and saying a few words to them. In a big unit, at a big television station, the roles and responsibilities were more clearly defined. There were also more rules and regulations here, unlike when Zhong Yi was working at BTV Arts Channel or the online television station. Overall, as the program team was just formed and meeting for the first time, although the roles of the team had not been fully filled yet and would have to wait until the program details were solidified, the main leadership roles of the program team had already been set. Fu Sihong was the executive producer appointed by Central TV Department 1, and would oversee the general administration of the team. Zhong Yi was the second in command as the executive director and would oversee the program planning, production, and other technical works. Chapter 631 The Troublesome Little Chen Chen After the introductions, there were two staff members that even producer Fu Sihong did not know too well probably because they were only transferred here today as well, and so they introduced themselves when it came to their turn. Seeing all the new colleagues, looking at the view outside the windows and the well-equipped office, Zhong Yi was feeling extremely satisfied with everything. Central TV Department 1 was just as its name suggested. The way they spent their finances was shown clearly by the resources littering the office and work area. The workplace's environment could be said to be the best in the industry and also the largest. Standing here, Zhong Yi could not find any faults at all. Other than satisfied, there was still satisfaction. Compared to this place, his previous departments at his old workplaces were basically just kennels. Fu Sihong said, Teacher Zhong, why don't you familiarize yourself with the team first, I will go out to bring a few more people over. Some of them are still not here yet. Zhong Yi turned around and said, Sure, please do what you need to. Fu Sihong turned around to leave the office. When he left, several of the team also livened up. From that, it seemed that Fu Sihong wasn't really a person anyone could easily talk to. Assistant Director Zhongs was said, Teacher Zhong, I've always liked your programs. When I heard from the leader yesterday that you would be doing the program planning for our new Thursday evening program, I was the first one to register to transfer over. Assistant Director Ha Chichi also said cheerfully, if we're talking about who was the first one to be confirmed for this new program team, then it has to be me. Even before the program team had been formed, my name was already on the list, but it was just a normal transfer for me as my previous program has already stopped airing. I really hadn't expected that Teacher Jong would join us, but as long as we follow Teacher Jong's command, then nothing will go wrong for sure. Didn't all of Teacher Zhong's past program productions all get popular wherever he went? Technical director Wu Yi nodded and said, I think we won't even need to use our brains to work anymore. As long as we follow Teacher Zhong's commands, everything should go smoothly and the ratings will surely be great. As they were all meeting for just the first time, they did not really know what to say, nor did they know how Zhong Yi was like as a person. To be on the safe side, they simply said some words that would suck up to Zhong Yi and that would ensure nothing was said wrong. Zhong Yi was enjoying it too. Well said, really well said. Chen Chen glanced at them, then glanced at Zhong Yi and smirked a little. Ha ha. Zhong Yi. Everyone. Ha Chichi asked, who might this beautiful little girl be? Zhong Yi said, she's my relative. I will be taking care of her for a few days as there's no one available to look after her. Ha Chichi smiled and squatted down, saying, this little one is really too cute. I've never seen such a beautiful child before. These words of hers sounded more sincere compared to earlier. Chen Chen, greet her, Zhong Yi said. Chen Chen listlessly greeted her, auntie. Ha Chichi said, what a good girl. Zhong Yi said helplessly, what's so good about her? This kid is always so troublesome. Being criticized in front of so many people, Chen Chen did not like it, so she said, Zhong Yi, you're the one who's troublesome. There are always news reports of you fighting with others. Pfft. When Ha Chichi heard that, she nearly burst out laughing. The others were also trying to hold in their laughter, not daring to laugh at all. The kid was indeed right. When it came to being troublesome, who could be more troublesome than the famous face-smacking Zhong of the entertainment circle? Zhong Yi was very embarrassed by this. Damned kid, why was she so disobedient? 
it's only my first day at work and you're already dragging me down. He snapped at her, shoo, shoo. Go and play somewhere by yourself. Chen Chen who was waiting exactly for this opportunity immediately slipped away to the row of windows in the office, and stuck her neck out to look down. When she got tired of standing, she found a chair for herself and sat there beside the windows. John Yi told his colleagues, this kid is a little different from other children. Don't judge her by seven or eight year old age. She's really more like a little adult and doesn't like to talk much or play. I don't even understand what she's thinking of all day. In any case, I will be bringing her around for these two days, so if she offends you guys in any way, please accept my apologies in advance. Don't take it up with her, and if possible, could everyone also keep an eye on her and keep her from running around? A young male staff member quickly said, Teacher Zhong, look at you. Why do you need to be so polite with us? Children are all like this. It's normal. Wu Yi said, yes, it will be fine. Ha Chichi, seemingly going with the flow, said, when you're not around, I'll help you look after the child. Leave it all to me. Zhong Yi said, is that really all right, Sister Chi? Ha Chichi happily said, since you're already addressing me as Sister Chi, even if it's not okay, it has now become okay. With just a few exchange of words, she had already observed Zhong Yi as someone easy to get along with. Indeed, Zhong Yi did not have any airs about him and was very polite when speaking. As a result, Ha Chichi also opened up a lot more and said, Don't worry, I'll definitely take good care of her. Zhong Yi quickly said, Then I give you my thanks. He knew that he couldn't possibly keep an eye on Chen Chen all day. With someone like Ha Chichi helping him, Zhong Yi was also less worried now. For the next half hour, Zhong Yi continued conversing with his colleagues, as other than chatting, there was no work to do at the moment. They talked about everything under the sky, but the conversation still mainly revolved around Zhong Yi. For example, they asked him for the meanings behind certain poems, the truth behind the Peking University incident, or the reason why he beat up Li Anson after the Spring Festival Gala this year. After all, many of them had only known about Zhong Yi from the news and media. They didn't know the details or the insider's point of view. Since they did not know, or to better phrase it, did not know. The full story, they were naturally more curious as well. Seeing how Zhong Yi was such an easy person to talk to, they started asking one by one, not knowing that Zhong Yi would really answer them and do a tell-all. With these conversations, their relationships were also pulled closer together. Not only did Zhong Yi's relationship with them get closer, even the relationship between themselves got better. As this group of people were all from different departments, even if they had seen each other before in the past, today was their first day as a new unit, so they surely had to slowly build up their trust and relationships with each other. A good conversation was often one of the best ways to pull people closer together. Eventually, they only stopped talking when Fu Sihong arrived back at the office with two new colleagues. They got to know these two newcomers a little before getting ready to unpack and arrange their things again. Things like the Wi-Fi password and intranet login details all needed to be reconfigured again, and there were still many other things that they had to do. Zhong Yi called out to Chen Chen again, come here. Chen Chen did not go over. She said, but I'm looking at the buildings. Zhong Yi said, then don't you run around carelessly in the office. When you get bored, come to my office and look for me. Right, remember to do your homework, didn't your teacher give you some for the weekend? Where did you put your bag? Chen Chen patted on the bag she had put on the windowsill. I know. Ha Chichi laughed and said, Teacher Zhong, leave it to me, don't bother yourself anymore. Sure, then I'll leave it to you. Zhong Yi then went into his new office. Once he entered the room, Zhong Yi immediately liked the place. There was a genuine leather sofa set, a genuine leather swivel chair, as well as an abstract piece of art hanging on the wall that he did not understand. He took a seat behind the large office desk and felt really comfortable there. In the past, Zhong Yi had worked at quite a number of places, but strictly speaking, he had never before had a standalone office for himself. This was a first for him. As Zhong Yi climbed up the social ladder, his status and recognizability also increased. This fellow's situation was becoming better and better. Not bad. Not bad at all. He switched on his computer and messed around with it for a while, then looked through some books at the bookshelf as well. 
After trying out everything for a while, Zhong Yi calmed down and started arranging his stuff too. He took out his stationery, such as a notebook and a fountain pen, as well as some tea leaves, and placed them in a spot he could easily reach. Of other miscellaneous items, he did not bother with them as the unit would be sure to provide them. After sitting there for a moment, Zhong Yi pushed the door open to go outside, hoping to familiarize himself with the situation around the office and the other departments. When he had just stepped out of the office, Zhong Yi saw something that left him vomiting blood. He saw Chen Chen holding her small bag and walking past the staff members one by one, handing out something to them. Chen Chen, uncle, help me with my Chinese homework. The young man smiled and said, sure, pass it to me. Chen Chen, auntie, help me do my composition. Ha Chichi didn't know whether to laugh or cry but said, let me give it a try then. Chen Chen, uncle, help me do my math homework. Zhongs were cleared his throat and nodded. All right, let me take a look. In a short moment, Chen Chen had already delegated all of her homework. Finally, she even instructed, don't tell Zhong Yi about this. He doesn't let me to get other people to help me with my homework. Zhong Yi was furious. He shouted, Rao Chen Chen. Chen Chen turned around and saw him, then sighed like a little adult and turned back around. She walked to the front of the aunties and uncles, very consciously taking back the workbooks one at a time from them. Everyone was tickled by the look on Chen Chen's face. Only Zhong Yi could not find any fun in this. He said, you're even commanding people to do things now. They're all busy and yet you want them to do your homework for you? What did I tell you before we came here? Chen Chen did not say a word. A female staff member said, Teacher Zhong, it's just a small matter. Ha Chichi also said, yes, the child is just playing around with us. Many of the staff in the office were speaking up for Chen Chen. It seemed that she was rather popular with the people here. Zhong Yi said to Chen Chen, this is your last chance. If I find you doing that again, I will leave you at home alone. Saying that, he finally stepped out of the office and went outside to take a look around. After about 20 minutes, when Zhong Yi returned he discovered Ha Chichi speaking to Chen Chen. An empty desk that Chen Chen had occupied was now littered with all sorts of snacks, chips, chocolate, soda, milk candy, etc. He didn't know who gave them to her but the kid was basically just hugging the soda bottle and drinking from it, holding the chips and munching on them. What a harvest she'd had. Zhong Yi said, how much do you intend to eat? Ha Chichi smiled and said, it's given to her by our female colleagues, just let her have some if she likes it. Have you thanked the sisters and aunties? Zhong Yi looked at Chen Chen and asked. A female colleague laughed and said, she's already thanked us. Chen Chen put down the cola and jumped down from the chair. She said, Zhong Yi, I need to go to the bathroom. Ha Chichi stood up and said, it's not so convenient for teacher Zhong to bring you. Come with me, let auntie take you instead. Chen Chen hesitated a little but still went over to Zhong Yi's side. She tugged at Zhong Yi's arm and urged him, Zhong Yi, I need to go to the bathroom. Get auntie Chi to go with you? Zhong Yi asked her. Chen Chen said, you take me. Zhong Yi said, you're still shy around strangers? Ha Chichi said, ha ha, the child is really sticking to you. Zhong Yi said, she only thinks of me when there's a problem. He pulled Chen Chen's hand and said, come along, I've just familiarized myself around here. There's a separate restroom over there. I will bring you this once, but you go there by yourself after that. Chen Chen nodded. Sigh. Looks like the whole morning would be wasted on looking after this child. Chapter 632 Entirely New Program Birthed Afternoon After lunch The morning was spent taking the child around, unpacking personal belongings, and familiarizing himself around the place. After getting lunch at Central TV's cafeteria, he went back to the program team's new office. Today's main work was finally going to be officially started. The first round of transfers to the new staff of this program team were all finally here. In the meeting room, more than a dozen people were seated, and fully filled the room. Fu Sihong kicked off the meeting first and said, from today onward, our new program team has been officially formed. Many of you were transferred here from the other departments of Central TV Department 1, while some others came here from the other channels. 
We also have two new members of Central TV who have many years of experience at their previous job. Some of you know each other from before while some of you are meeting for the first time, but overall, our new program team is still quite young and there is a lot to work on together to deepen your mutual understanding. I hope that, in the course of our work from now on, with the guidance of teacher Jong and me, everyone can get along well and work seriously so that our new program will flourish and be good. Ba ba ba. Everyone clapped softly. Fu Sihong looked to his side and said, Teacher Jong, why don't you say a few words as well? In this newly set up program team, the core leaders were in fact made up of just two people. One was Fu Sihong, the other was Zhong Yi. As for the others, like the assistant directors and assistant producers, they were not considered to be leaders in the team yet. Even though the positions were only different in that one had the word executive in it, the differences were as wide as the distance between the sky and the earth. Whether it be at a television station or in a film crew, an assistant director had little authority and would be managed like they were just a clerk or assistant handling administrative duties. Zhong Yi nodded and gave his first speech as a leader. Since I am in charge of the production, let me talk about the program. The station has given us a direction already and we are allowed to do any type of variety program without restriction. The station head has very high expectations of us and is willing to provide us with very good funding for the program too, so I would like to hear about everyone's opinions and discuss the kind of a program we should be making. Jong's was said, according to the market trend, the audience still leans toward the singing shows. At the very least, if we did that, we would not have to worry about the viewership ratings at all. It is definitely a safe choice. Hachichi said, but the viewership ratings won't be high either. Jong's were nodded and said, that's true. That is a difficulty facing new programs nowadays. The genres of shows that have already been acknowledged by the market and audience are all highly sought after by the various larger television stations. The competition is tough and the audience base is also scattered as a result of this. But even if we do some other type of lesser known program, the audience would not really accept it. Wu Yi said, the singing shows are really getting more and more difficult to make. A female staff member said, but the program that teacher Jong planned, that do you remember, has received very favorable ratings. It has always been the first or second place program in the same time slot for nationwide viewership ratings. Ha Chichi nodded and said, I've watched Do You Remember before and it's really good. It's something innovative and has entertained the audiences to its best potential. If we could get the copyright for that program, then we could also do a similar type of show. Similar type? This was obviously not what Zhong Yi was going after. Zhong Yi said, Is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up? Everyone freely spoke their minds. The overall consensus was more inclined towards a singing program. However, they were also very wary and hesitant of the potential pitfalls of such a show, so there was also quite a lot of disagreement over it. They were unable to come to a conclusion about it at this moment. Actually, what many of them had on their minds was how Central TV should have signed Zhong Yi earlier. If that were the case, then Zhong Yi would not have sold Do You Remember to Beijing Television, and it would end up as a program on their own Central TV Department 1's channel instead. However, they didn't know that, even if Zhong Yi had joined Central TV Department 1 earlier, he would not have gone on to produce Do You Remember. But if he did, he would not have made himself the host of the show or treated it as a hit program. Because to Zhong Yi, although Do You Remember was a rather good program with rather good viewership ratings, it was still at best described as rather good only. What Zhong Yi was chasing after was not to be rather good, but to be the best. He wanted to make a successful program that would break the viewership ratings, something that would be a blockbuster type of a program. Do You Remember did not qualify as that to him. Zhong Yi had a limited amount of energy and time. His year also consisted of 365 days like any other person, so if he wanted to replicate every idea of a program that he had in his mind into this world, that was obviously impossible. If Zhong Yi wanted to produce and host a program all by himself, he would surely use the most successful and blockbuster type of program from his previous world and produce it for this world's audience. The meeting ended. Zhong Yi and Fu Sihong were walking together, discussing the meeting and the new program. It could be determined from their conversation that Fu Sihong was also inclined to do a singing show, as the market demand of variety programs in current times was quite poor, with the viewer ratings often averaging quite low. 
It was no longer like five to ten years ago when the genre was enjoying its peak with high viewer ratings. So if they were forced to pick the best out of whatever was given to them, they would surely end up choosing a singing show that was also the biggest slice of the pie left, followed by reality television programs, and other types. Gathering everyone's opinions and viewpoints, Zhong Yi had formed a general idea in his mind. They all preferred a singing show? All right, let's make one of those then. Difficult to innovate? This was clearly not a hurdle that would trouble Zhong Yi. After Zhong Yi came out from Fu Si Hong's office, he announced to those outside, who can help me with a few surveys. I would like to know about the other satellite channel singing programs viewership ratings and market share, from their first episode to their latest one. It would be best if we could do up concise research on this. Oh, yes, I'll also need information about their celebrity guests and key contestants, or champions and runner-ups. Best case would be video clips of them. Harchichi was a little taken aback. She said, you're sure that you want to do a singing program? Zhongyi smiled and said, tentatively, yes. Harchichi said, all right then, I'll go and prepare the data. Wu Yi said, I'll help you, Sister Chi. Zhongs was said, then I'll get the others to search for the information about the celebrity guests and competitors. Zhongyi said, great, thanks for the trouble, please get them as soon as possible. This program was very important to Zhong Yi and he also placed a good deal of focus on it. He couldn't just handle this program proposal like he did for Do You Remember? Since that was meant to be sold to others, he did not put too much attention into it and could naturally leave all the work to the people at Beijing Television Station, and not do anything himself. But this new program was meant to be done by himself with him as the host, so he definitely had to make the best preparations he could. This was the debut show of Zhong Yi at Central TV Department 1, he could not afford to slack or take it too lightly. That was the reason why he wanted to gather information and news on all the other television stations' singing programs. He needed to know in detail the overall setup of this world singing show so that he could make the necessary adjustments to his program proposal. As the proverb goes, know yourself as well as you know the enemy. In the executive director's office. Zhong Yi came back in and saw Chen Chen sitting in the genuine leather swivel chair. As she was still quite short, she had trouble holding the mouse and was awkwardly controlling and clicking it. Zhong Yi went around behind her to have a look and saw that she was playing games. It was some sort of a puzzle game, one that required the player to clear the bubbles from the game screen. Whatever it was, Zhong Yi did not really understand. Go away, I have work to do, Zhong Yi said, trying to chase her off. Chen Chen did not look away from the computer screen and said, let me play a little while more. Zhong Yi rushed her and said, hurry up, I have serious work to do here. Chen Chen did not want to listen and said, Zhong Yi, I'm going to play for a bit more. I've already finished my homework. Are you serious? Let me have a look. Zhong Yi saw the workbooks beside her and picked them up, flipping through them. She had really finished them, so he said, okay then, you did well. All right, I'll let you play for a while longer. He could only go over to the guest sofa beside the door and sit there, taking out his fountain pen to work on the program proposal. A while later. Ha Chichi came into the office and reported, the data has all been gathered. Zhang Zhuo had also finished his task and come into the, the office. The information you needed from me has also been collected. Zhang Yi took it from them and said, that's good, let me have a look. When Ha Chichi and Zhang were both noticed that Chen Chen had already occupied and taken over the office desk, leaving Zhang Yi sitting in a corner. They couldn't help but look at each other and laugh a little. From this alone, they could see that even though Zhang Yi kept complaining about Chen Chen, he was actually also very generous to her. After looking through the data and research, Zhang Yi's heart was set. Having gotten to know this world's singing programs better now, he knew that the singing show's development here was indeed quite different from his previous worlds. If he wanted to say who was doing it better, then there was really no way to give an answer to that, since both worlds had their positives. Zhong Yi's previous world did better in that they had a better diversification of presentation and style. The same types of programs were all done differently by tweaking the sequence and formats. For this world, it stood out in terms of the audience numbers and their fervent support for singing programs. 
even if there were four or five program slots a week that were packed with singing shows, no one got sick of them and continued watching. However, each program's viewer ratings were not really high and were only at around 0.5% to 0.6%. But when all the singing program's market shares were added together, it became a frightening figure. Overall, this world singing program's market and audience were considered to be enormous, with many people doing such shows as well. Inadvertently, the market share was also spread that way accordingly as its viewership ratings showed. This was what led to the embarrassing situation of having such average viewership ratings now. If, which was a big if there were an incredibly outstanding singing program that could put to shame all of the other satellite channel singing programs, then that huge audience base would definitely come together and be reflected on this outstanding program's viewership ratings. But was there anyone who could achieve this? The unification of all singing programs? This was actually what Zhang Yi was aiming for. If he wanted to launch a singing program in this world, but was not bold enough then the program would definitely be smothered and killed by all the other singing shows of the other satellite channels. Besides, just because others could not achieve it did not mean he could not achieve it. This market did not lack an audience base. In fact, the audience base was very large, but what it lacked was a program that would shine in the eyes of everyone watching it. While back at Zhong Yi's previous world, due to the critical tastes of the audience, there was a lack of audience base, but no shortage of wonderful programs. If he had the program, and there was an existence of a good audience base in this world, then these two worlds were surely made for each other. And the matchmaker for the two of them was naturally going to be Zhong Yi. His debut program on Central TV this time was going to be broadcast nationwide. It was a totally different platform compared to his previous platforms. This was Zhong Yi's important step towards the A-list celebrity rankings, so then what sort of a program should he bring out this time? What sort of a singing program would be most suitable for this situation? Not only must the show have a good reputation and viewer ratings, at the same time, it also had to showcase Zhong Yi as a host. For most talent shows like that, the role of the host was usually minimal and negligible. The main focus would usually be on the contestants and celebrity guests, so that would mean Zhong Yi's program of choice was even more limited now. Which should he choose? Which was the better option? Suddenly, Zhong Yi looked towards Chen Chen and said, Chen Chen stop playing already how long has it been since you've started don't overdo it uncle still has work to do. Due to the fruit of agility's effects, as Zhong Yi did not control it well due to a lack of concentration, the signals from his brain were fired too quickly which accelerated his speech, like a trace would be left behind. Even though he spoke extremely quickly, each of his words could be heard and were also enunciated very clearly. Chen Chen looked at him and asked, Zhong Yi, why have you been talking so quickly for the past two days? When Zhong Yi heard this, he pondered for a moment and then suddenly slapped his thigh with a loud laugh. I got it. It's gotta be you. My the voice of China. Chapter 633 The speed of Zhong Yi's write-up of the program proposal. A classic singing program? Must have a good reputation? Must have a ridiculous viewer rating? The host must not act as just a supporting role? There was only one answer and it was probably the only program that could meet the criteria. If this was the past, Zhong Yi would seriously not dare to use this program because he was afraid that he would do it badly since he did not think he could do justice to the details in the program. To destroy such a classic program from his previous world which was so popular across the country. No, it should be said that it was so popular around the world instead. So if it were destroyed in the hands of Zhong Yi, then he would surely have become a sinner by spoiling something so great. But now, Zhong Yi dared to do it, not because of anything except the reason of having eaten those hundred plus fruits of agility he had gotten from the lottery draw. When he received the fruit of agility prize from the lottery draw the first time, he felt that this item was useless to him. When he won it again in the latest lottery draw, Zhong Yi still did not make much of it until today. When he realized that it had another effect, the fruit of agility could affect his talking and reaction speed. As Zhong Yi had majored in broadcasting, his talking speed was not slow to begin with. At the very least, he was still a bit faster than the average person, but that was not good enough. Compared to his previous world's host of the Voice of China, Hua Xiao Wan, he was still way behind him. It wasn't even unfair to say that he was not comparable to some of those crosstalk actors who could do speed recital well. 
because talking speed was more dependent on talent and genes than on training, there was nothing anyone could really do about it. If your reaction speed was already slow to start with, even if your brain fired countless of signals at once, your body would still be restricted to its reaction speed. If you wanted to increase your speed by 1% more, it was already very difficult, not to mention if you wanted to suddenly increase it by 50 to 70%. This was not something that could be trained. But now? John Yi could do it. His reaction speed had already increased multiple times and his talking speed was no longer the same as before, so why would he still have any doubts about it now? For him, the voice was definitely the best option. There were no other programs which were suitable for the current situation and condition. It's settled. He proceeded to write the program proposal quickly. Even without the help of the memory search capsules, Zhong Yi could write the proposal in detail. He couldn't help it, this program was way too popular. Zhong Yi had even watched it many times over. Chen Chen asked, Zhong Yi, do you need to use the computer? No, no need. Zhong Yi was busily writing something. Hearing that, Chen Chen continued holding the mouse and said, then I will continue playing. Zhong Yi did not forget to remind her, don't place your head too close to the monitor screen, and try to protect your eyesight. If in the future you become nearsighted, you will suffer. Chen Chen said, Zhong Yi, you nag so much. Zhong Yi grunted, then why are you always making people worry? I'm almost your dad at this point. One page. Two pages. Three pages. The more he wrote, the more excited he became. He was not getting excited over the writing of the proposal, rather because of the anticipation that this extremely reputable program would soon be produced by his hands. He could not wait any longer. In the past, whether it was for Lecture Room or any inspired talk show like Tonight 80's Talk Show and Mr. Ju Live Show, compared to the viewership ratings of The Voice, they were leagues apart. That was why Zhong Yi's expectations and drive were also very different. Later that afternoon. 1.30 p.m. Director Jiang Yuan of Central TV Department 1 came over to inspect the progress. Actually, it couldn't be considered as inspecting the progress as the new program team had just been established, so he only came to have a look around. This program team was under Director Jiang Yuan's charge and he was very concerned about the team's transition and whether the viewership ratings of new program could achieve the desired results. Director Jiang. Director. Director Jiang. Everyone stopped what they were doing. Fu Sihong also came out of his office. Jiang Yuan smiled and said, everyone's busy? Getting used to the new environment yet? Ha Chichi said, yes, we're getting used to it. This new office is much better than the Variety Channel's office. It's definitely much better to work with Director Jiang. She hadn't been working at Central TV Department 1 but with Central TV's variety channel before being transferred over here. Jiang Yuan shook his head and said, you have such a glib tongue. Then he looked around and asked, where's little Zhong? Zhong's were answered, teacher Zhong is in his office studying and researching the singing programs of other satellite channels. Jiang Yuan asked with interest, oh? Singing programs? Fu Sihong said, we still don't know what the final concept will be. Should I call him over? There's no need to. Jiang Yuan stopped him and said, let little Zhong continue with his studying. When he gets a good grasp of the other similar programs, he will be able to draw up a better program, so there's no need to rush him. Additionally, he also reminded them, these next few days, I hope everyone will put in more effort to help little Zhong finalize the program proposal. Once we have the proposal and after I approve it, the funding will be released to the team. Since this program will be made in-house and not bought from a production company, the funding will be relatively better too, so don't have any worries in that regard. Johns were said immediately, you can rest assured too, Director Jiang. We will definitely cooperate well to get things done. Fu Sihong also said, we already have some general direction and will try our best to quickly finish the first draft of the proposal. Normally, there would be several drafts for a television program proposal. If the first one did not work, they would do it a second time, and if that also could not work out, then they would do it a third time. 
the possibility in getting an approval after the first attempt was close to zero, as it needed to be altered several times according to new inputs and restrictions before the final proposal would be completed. It was sometimes possible that a proposal which started as a singing program would end up becoming an interview program. Fu Sihong added, give us three days, we will submit it to you in three days at the latest. Jiang Yuan nodded and said, all right, work hard on it, all of you. As they were talking, the executive director's office door opened and Zhong Yi came out holding some handwritten papers. He said, A, hey, Director Jiang. Did you come to inspect our work? Jiang Yuan nodded, I came to take a look. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Then your timing is perfect. Waving the papers in his hands, he continued, I've already written the new program's proposal. Upon hearing this, Fu Sihong was stunned. Jiang Yuan was also stunned. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the rest were also quite dumbfounded at this. What did you say? It's already completed? You took such a short time to write it all down. Just a while ago, executive producer Fu was still assuring director Jiang that the program proposal would be completed within three days, but you only took less than an hour to do it? That's even faster than a spaceship. Regardless of whether it was other television stations or central TV, a proposal for such a major variety program would surely have needed a minimum of three to five days to complete, right? That was already accounting for the best case scenario. For those with a much more detailed program proposal, it would be common to take up to half a month to write out. But you? You completed it in less than an hour. How could you come up with a good program proposal if you did it so hastily? Everyone was at a loss for words. Jiang Yuan remained silent for a very long time before he was finally unable to hold back and said, aren't you being too efficient? Zhong Yi took it as a praise and said, that's right, I've always done my program proposals quickly since I'm never indecisive about my ideas. I will just write when I've given it enough thought, so that doesn't take too much time to do. Fu Sihong said in disbelief, you have really finished it. I can't possibly be lying, right? Zhong Yi called for an administrative staff member and passed the papers to her. He said to her, Little Wang, go make some copies of this and distribute them to everyone. Little Wang replied clearly, OK. The copier sounded noisily as the copies were made. A short while later, the copies were completed. Little Wang passed a copy to Jiang Yuan first, then to Fu Sihong, and finally to the rest of the colleagues. Everyone quickly took it and had a look. Their first reaction was, how stunning. It was not the content that was stunning, they did not have enough time to read through it yet, but on first glance, they saw neatly lined up words written with fountain pen ink on paper. That harmonious feeling even seemingly gave life to the paper. Looking at the program proposal was literally an enjoyment as the words were too beautiful. There was no one else at Central TV who could write with such beautiful handwriting. Ha Chichi could not help complimenting him, what nice handwriting. Zhong Yi smiled and said, thank you. Zhong Zui, Wu Yi, and the others all looked in the direction of Zhong Yi in surprise. They could not understand how such a careless person, who always went around scolding and fighting with others, creating fear in others of the entertainment industry, could have such a beautiful handwriting. It was rumored before that Zhong Yi had a high level of accomplishment in calligraphy, now, it looked like those rumors were not fake. They could tell that just from the handwriting. Chapter 634 No Optimism for the Voice? Everyone read the proposal. Beside them, Zhong Yi explained, this name of this program will be tentatively titled The Voice of China, or simply just The Voice. This is a large-scale singing talent show. The competition format is the same as other traditional singing programs, starting from the preliminary auditions, then letting the coaches choose their contestant students before proceeding to the group stages, and the finals after that. That's the general process of the program. Jiang Yuan raised his head. Fu Sihong and the others all looked at him as well. They no longer read from the proposal and were just listening to Zhong Yi explain it directly. Zhong Yi explained fervently, but if you all think that the program is just going to be this simple, then you've got it wrong. The program's format might be the same as the traditional singing show format, but its core and selling point are different. When we do the studio setup, the seats of the four coaches are the key. During the auditions, the coaches' seats are all facing with backs to the stage. 
They won't see the contestant and won't know their gender, height, or looks. They will only be able to hear their voice and singing talent, using these factors to decide if the contestant will pass or fail. This is also why the program's name is The Voice. How does that sound? Everyone must be stunned? Everyone must be shocked? Right? After Zhong Yi explained his proposal, he looked at them in satisfaction and waited for their reactions. He had predicted that everyone would feel shocked and clap or bow in amazement, but contrary to his expectations, the outcome was very different from how it played out in his mind. Everyone was shocked all right, but they were shocked from being horrified. Zhong Zhuo. Fu Sihong was badly shocked. Are you serious? Zhong Yi said, of course. Hachichi also drew a gasp and said, This, how can this work? Zhong Yi asked, What's the matter? Is there a problem? Is this program's proposal so difficult to understand? Fu Sihong said, Although you claim that it is different, but to me, it sounds just the same as any other singing program that the other television stations are doing. At most, you have an additional segment where the chairs turn around. Zhong Yi said, The turning around of the chairs is just a means and strategy of the show. But with this additional segment, it would give the audience a totally different feel and experience while they watch the show. We're basically telling them that our The Voice chooses the contestants based not on their backgrounds, their stories, their height, and especially not their looks. As long as they have a good voice and can sing well, they can show themselves to the world on the stage of The Voice. Essentially, this program's aim is to go back to the basics of singing. We do not care about looks or stories, we will only listen to The Voice. Jones was said in a stunned manner, only listen to the voice, this. Fu Sihong had a different view from him as he shook his head vigorously, saying, but have you thought about this? If the stage will be adorned by only short, fat, or not good-looking contestants, then it would greatly affect the quality of the program. The image and effect would be totally shattered, so why would the audience want to watch that? In this industry, a competition-based program's bottom line, if I may put it honestly is the requirement of the contestant being a talking point. We need them to have outstanding appearances and great singing ability so that they can hold the stage and attention of the audience. If we're talking about the program that you did earlier, that do you remember, then maybe this can be overlooked, since it isn't a talent show program. But as long as it is one, then we can never escape that. A singing competition that does not have handsome guys or pretty women taking part. I do not see why the audience would want to watch something like that on their TVs. That is why I find this proposal to have very serious problems as it goes against the rules of a variety program. Zhong Yi shook his head and said, Why can't a talent show escape association with handsome guys and pretty women? That is only the mindset of the industry professionals, it's a cage that they've placed themselves in. This program of mine precisely wants to target that mindset by not following those rules. It will be precisely because of this that the audience will want to watch, and like to watch, the program. Besides, I have never stated that the stage for The Voice will not have any good-looking people gracing its stage, did I? If the contestant can really sing, and also look good at the same time, then naturally it would be fine. But the only thing about the stage for The Voice is that the proportion of good-looking people might be smaller since the contestants would mostly still be fairly average-looking people. Fu Sihong insisted, I feel that this program will not do well. Zhong Yi did not get angry at this but said, the singing shows these days are unable to bring excitement simply because every other such program is doing exactly the same thing, being trapped by their traditional mindset. How I judge whether a program will be successful is not to see how the industry insiders analyze it with their performance indicators, or experience. What I am looking for is the viewpoint of an audience on such a program. Fu Sihong retorted, for a program producer, experience is the most valuable asset that they can fall back on. Zhong Yi looked at him and said, experience is mold from learning and references and is limited to this moment while the pace of innovation and the wisdom of humans are the only things that are limitless. If the ancient people based everything on their experiences, then they would never have believed that there would be a day when humanity would go to the moon. Do you think that what their experiences told them was correct then? The two of them wrangled over the matter, both making a stand for their own side of the argument. But it was clear that after a few exchange of words, Fu Sihong had succumbed and could not out-talk Zhong Yi. When Zhong Zui, Ha Chichi, and the others saw this, they simply decided not to retort at all. 
they knew very well that they were not as eloquent as someone who was a professional host like Zhong Yi, and would not be able to outtalk him even if they combined their efforts together. Honestly, Zhong Yi could not understand their concerns either. Why would anyone feel that such an innovative idea like the voice would be bad? Wasn't that an international joke? It seemed to him that, even if they felt at the proposal stage that the talk show was not be good enough, it would be acceptable. After all, there was no precedent of an entertainment program like a talk show in this world. If they also felt that Do You Remember was not going to be good, that was also acceptable since this world did not have a low barrier entry variety program for citizens to join and compete in an all out PK match with other people. But that was not the case for The Voice at all. This program had such mass appeal and the features of the show could be clearly seen too. So why would a bunch of television industry professionals not understand that? How odd. Were their standards really that low? Zhong Yi pondered over this for a very long time before finally coming to a conclusion. In Zhong Yi's previous world, when he was considered an audience member, an outsider of the television industry, he immediately started looking forward to the voice of China when its trailers began airing. Thinking about it now, it was probably not because his standard was higher than Fu Sihong, Ha Chichi, and everyone else's, but more likely had to do with the understanding of his previous world's people's understanding of singing programs compared to the people here. In Zhong Yi's previous world, the voice was already very famous before it started its broadcast in China. This program was also shown on Dutch and American television where it did very well. When the television station in China purchased the rights to do the voice, the local audience base was already built up due to foreign influence. Zhong Yi was also one of those people who already knew the format of the program, and as a result, anticipated its airing in China. Another point was that the singers from Zhong Yi's previous world came in the form of good-looking people as well as not good-looking people. Even those top singers, whether they looked good or ugly, were not too different in popularity from each other. Was Han Hong good-looking? Was Sun Nan good-looking? Was Wang Feng good-looking? Was Hu Yang Bin good-looking? Was Huang Qishan good-looking? Was Xiao Huangqi good-looking? Was Zhao Chuan good-looking? Was Li Zhengxin good-looking? Some of them had very average looks, some of them were really not too good-looking at all, yet they all got very popular based on their talent and vocals, even though there was an element of luck at times too. However, in this world? Those A- or B-list singers were basically all good-looking men and women, among whom were scattered some who were not pretty or handsome, but couldn't be considered ugly either and were above average looking. If it really had to be insisted that there were ugly singers, it was also true, but such singers were really few and rare. Those were the differences between the two worlds. The perception of singers was different to the people of both worlds. In this world, whether it be the programs or the media, they had always been advocating that you should have good looks if you wanted to be a celebrity. That was the bottom line before the focus would shift to whether you could sing or not. There was just such an unhealthy tone in the overall environment of the industry. Their understanding of a singer was different and Zhong Yi could understand this deeply, since he had also experienced being judged on his looks in his first interview back at Beijing radio station, and was deemed unsuitable for the role. But if you thought about it, what was the point of a radio host being so good-looking? Shouldn't it be fine as long as he wasn't bad-looking? But that was not how they saw it. That was just how their perception in this world was, and thus resulted in the current state of the entertainment industry. Fu Sihong and the others believed that a talent show had to be judged on looks first and foremost, the contestants' vocals were secondary, so if the proposal stated that the program would only care about the vocals and not the looks, they felt that it was just asking for it to fail, since this concept itself was basically challenging the cognitive mindsets of how singing programs should be. But was it really asking to fail? Would the audience really dismiss it? Only Zhong Yi knew that this would definitely not be the case. It was just because the industry professionals believed that the audience would not accept it. Yet back in Zhong Yi's previous world, this had already been proven that the audience were accepting of such changes. Not only did they accept it, they even praised and recognized such types of shows. There were many people who specifically liked a show which portrayed the average looking contestants in a competition, since it more closely related to them. Zhong Yi wanted to tell Fu Sihong and the others that the audience was not as fragile and simple-minded as they thought. 
all those other singing programs were in themselves unhealthy existences in the entertainment industry. However, whether the voice would be accepted by the audience in this world was still unknown to Zhong Yi. But Zhong Yi was also an example himself. Didn't he look very ordinary? Wasn't he also not a handsome guy or pretty boy? But look at him now. He could still stand on the national stage and be recognized and loved by many people in the country. That of itself already explained something. The environment and history of this world might have changed, but the hearts of the people remained. There was silence in the office. Nobody knew what to say. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others were all looking at each other. This type of program was indeed controversial. If you said it was good, it was too extreme and would break all the rules of a talent show. But if you said it was bad, it sounded like a very innovative way of doing a show by basing it only on the voice, where the coaches would not be to see the contestants. This idea was totally unheard of in all singing programs at television stations all over the world. Finally, Jiang Yuan spoke. He looked at Zhong Yi for a long time before he said, in this industry, everyone says that you're bold, daring to do the things that no one else dares even think about. I can say that I've finally seen that boldness for myself today. But Zhong Yi said, to be honest, I've never had much courage. The reason why I dared to say that and want to do it is because I have 100% certain that it will work out. Fu Sihong said in a speechless manner, why can you be so sure? You're being too absolute. Jiang Yuan looked at Zhong Yi and said, I've already mentioned to you our expectations when the television station invited you to join us. What we need is a program that will receive high viewership ratings consistently. Although you're the executive director, and we've also agreed that the program production will be fully dictated by you, there is a clear disagreement right now about this proposal, which also shows that there is a problem with it. Why don't I do it this way instead? I will bring a copy of the proposal back to discuss with the other leaders before I give you an answer. But it's for the best that you also prepare another new proposal if the voice does not pass the management's approval, so then at least we can still have a backup. From the sound of it, it also seemed like he did not have much confidence in the proposal. Zhong Yi shook his head and said, there's no need to prepare another proposal. The voice will not have any problems, that I guarantee. As for the quality of the program, everyone can judge it once it has finished recorded. Director Jiang, although I am a host, I am also a professional program planner and producer. Whether it be the programs or advertisements that I have done up before, I have never disappointed. You have to believe my most basic judgment as a professional. Having listened to all of this, Jiang Yuan could only say, All right, I'll see what I can do. Chapter 635 The show is approved. Jiang Yuan left. Fu Sihong also went back to his own office. Ha Chichi suddenly said, Teacher Zhong, are you really serious about making this program? Of course I'm serious, Zhong Yi said in frustration, do I look like I'm joking? Zhong's were proposed an idea, I have a suggestion, but don't take it in the wrong way, Teacher Zhong. Actually, we can modify the format of the voice a little so that it looks to the audience that the gimmick of not seeing the contestants is real but we will continue doing it the way we would for similar talent shows. We would still invite only the better-looking contestants to join the competition, and secretly let the coaches know so that they have some idea of the contestants before choosing them, so that the ones who are chosen are the ones picked for their looks, attractability, and have a good talking point to them. That way, we would still be able to achieve our objectives. Wu Yi snapped his fingers and said, that's a very good idea. However, without even thinking, Zhong Yi immediately said, when the television station does a program, we're doing it to catch the hearts of the audience. We do that by leading them step by step into liking our program to achieve our objectives, but leading them in does not mean lying to them. Don't think that the ways and means you believe are great would definitely be able to lead the audience in a certain direction. They are not fools and you should never look down on the wisdom and judgment of the masses. I should make myself very clear here, the singing programs now, and even the singing industry, are all not developing in a healthy way. My reason for doing this new program is not to make a statement, nor is it to lie to the audience by superficially reforming the industry. What I want to do is to make a program that will topple the traditional singing show and talent shows of the past. As their mindsets were too deeply ingrained in traditional thinking, 
Zhong Yi could not get it through to them even after explaining forever, so he decided to leave it at that and walked back to his office. He still had a lot of work to do, like planning the program trailers, making the designs of the set, and many other things, all of which he wanted to plan in advance. There was no time to waste on nonsense. When he left, Zhongs were asked, do you think it's feasible? Ha Chichi shook her head and said, I don't know. Another director said, this program is very dangerous to do. Wu Yi sighed and said, yeah, it's too radical of a change, so I suppose it's really risky as well. But it's possible that we cannot see what Zhong Yi sees. Ha Chichi added, no matter what, teacher Zhong is still a specialist at program production, so he's surely looking at something bigger than we are. If teacher Zhong can propose such a program and say that it is good, then he surely has his reasons and considerations. Zhongs were pessimistically said, hopefully. Ha Chichi said, let's wait and see how the leaders decide. Because this new show also determined the futures and careers of the program team staff, they were definitely worried about it and did not want it to be done sloppily. At another place. In a meeting room. After Jiang Yuan went back to his office, he got his secretary to gather the planning team and related staff for a meeting. Everyone who was there were all veterans of Central TV Department 1 and were all very experienced, having done countless programs between them. They were all considered the core members of Central TV Department 1's production team. Jiang Yuan got his secretary to pass out Zhong Yi's program proposal to each one of them and said, Take a look. This is the program proposal written up by Zhong Yi. Let's discuss it. Everyone started reading it in detail, and gradually, in succession, their faces formed some sort of startled expression. This. What is this nonsense? It's very innovative, but this is too radical. Other than the vocals, this singing talent show does not consider any other factors? Just what kind of bold person would dare to write up a proposal like that? This would subvert the entire singing industry and related singing shows. How audacious! Only Zhong Yi would dare to do something like this. The talented are bolder. I think this idea is worth a try. What's there to try? This is obviously not going to work. It is completely out of line with the market trends and practices. Do you think that just basing the show on vocals alone would attract the viewers? The gimmick of judging a contestant based on just their vocals would be able to prop up the entire talent show. This is not a variety program that would last one or two episodes, it's a competition that stretches over at least two months. I won't say that using vocals as an attraction is not innovative, but it is not strong enough to carry the show. The audiences might not be able to accept it either. We know that just by looking at the other singing shows. The hotly discussed champions and runner-ups always do well in the looks department. That has clearly shown where the audience's taste lie at. How the other satellite channels are doing it does not reflect the problems at all. If the idea of only focusing on the vocals of the contestants were conveyed to the audience beforehand, the mindset of the audience would also be different when they watch the show and they might accept Zhong Yi's selling point for the program. But of course, there's no guarantee for that since there isn't any precedent of something like this. I don't think it will work. I feel that it might just be a thin line between failure and success. As there's no way to predict this based on our experiences without any precedent to fall back on, if there's something that we can learn from and judge upon, then it has to be that regardless of Zhong Yi's character and temper, he really is a very capable person. The programs he handled previously have had no precedent of failure yet and have even gone on to do quite well. So from those examples, I have to admit that Zhong Yi's vision is surely better than most people's. That's true. If it were any other program producer who submitted this proposal, I would surely reject it. But because this proposal was written up by Zhong Yi, I am unable to make any judgment on it. Most of us here are professional program producers too, but if we compare the results of the programs that we've all worked on, then our results and qualifications are truly unable to match Zhong Yi's. I've also heard that there are some foreign television stations who have shown interest in the copyrights for Zhong Yi's talk show. I've heard about that too. I think those foreigners are really interested in it, but then I don't know if they have approached Zhong Yi regarding the copyrights yet. If he is really able to sell it to them, then this will be a historical first for foreign television stations buying our Chinese television copyrights. We would finally have foreigners approaching us to learn from us. 
How uplifting. This would also give our Chinese television and variety industry a boost, since we'd finally have a world-class program. But The Voice and Zhong Yi's talk show are different. The talk show cuts a figure of being Zhong Yi's creative whim, but singing shows have already been heavily produced and are very well established in our industry. Now that Zhong Yi is intending to defy the market trends and go against everything that we've known, will it work? Everyone here was also having their disagreements, some suggesting to give it a try while others rejected it outright. Jiang Yuan looked at the program proposal and lowered his head in silence too. His viewpoint was the same as what someone had mentioned just now. If the proposal was submitted by anyone else, he would have rejected it directly without a thought. However, the problem here was that this proposal was submitted by Zhong Yi, who was known as the man who repeatedly created viewership miracles. At around 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Jian Yuan returned to the new program's office. He called out, Little Zhong. Hearing that, Zhong Yi came out from his office. Fu Sihong, Ha Chichi, and the others were also beside him, knowing that the decision was probably made at the meeting. Jian Yuan's first words to Zhong Yi were, are you very sure that this program will work out? I am sure. In fact, I guarantee it, Zhong Yi said without any sign of hesitation. Jiang Yuan nodded and said, you have been given the go-ahead to do the voice, but if the average ratings fall below 0.8%, what would you say to that? Zhong Yi said, 0.8%? Jiang Yuan said, yes. Zhong Yi was amused at this question, so he said, then I will pack up and leave. That was exactly what Jiang Yuan wanted to hear. He said, all right then, from today onward, the Voice of China will formally begin its production. I hope that the final product that you all come up with will be something satisfactory. Zhong Yi laughed, just wait and see. Fu Sihong interrupted, Director Jiang. Jiang Yuan stopped him and said, don't bother saying any more. It's been decided. Thinking how Zhong Yi had already put his job on the line, Fu Sihong also did not say anything more. From his point of view, he believed that Jiang Yuan was also likely to not have too much confidence in this new program. Jiang Yuan said, I want you guys to come up with an application documentation later so that I can bring it to finance and inform them. For the initial funding, I will be setting aside 20 million renminbi for your team. When Zhong Yi heard this, he couldn't accept it. He said, Director Jiang, 20 million is definitely not enough. In fact, it's far from enough and won't be enough to support this program. Jiang Yuan said, I've already pushed very hard for the go-ahead for this program at the meeting earlier. The disagreements over this new program proposal were raised by many people, so you must know that I'm also facing a great deal of pressure. Zhong Yi said, 20 million is not enough to invite a few proper guest celebrities as coaches, not to mention that we still need a budget for the set, stage facilities, and a live band for the show. Director Jiang, didn't you say earlier that you have plenty of funding for us? Jiang Yuan said noncommittally, that is all I can give for now. If you need additional funding in the future, we'll talk about it again. What I need now is the promotional trailer for the show so that we can release it to the public and get some feedback. If it gets a warm reception, then we can discuss the additional funding. Only when he said that did Zhong Yi stop talking. 20 million? It's not too much even if it's 200 million. Forget it, it's better to take it slow. If he were to ask for 200 million from the station now, the whole of Central TV Department 1 would probably vomit blood and treat him as a madman. After all, according to what Zhong Yi knew, the Central TV Department 1 of this world had never ever invested so much funding into a program before. 20 million was already considered to be a large investment into a program. Some of the other Central TV Department 1 programs only had a budget of several million RMB. For some interview programs, if not taking into account the host's salary or not inviting any big shot guests, then even if it aired four times a month, it would only have a budget of 1 million, which was really cheap. But variety shows were not the same, those were part of a genre that basically gobbled up money. No matter how much was spent, it was never enough. Jiang Yuan left. Zhong Zhuo, Ha Chichi, and the rest were left in a predicament. Zhong Zhuo was feeling a little dizzy. 0.8% for viewership ratings? Ha Chichi also did not look too good. 
She said, even the most outstanding and well-received singing program this year, Do You Remember, only received 0.8% for its highest rated episode. When it was low, it only got 0.7% or less. To demand of our new program a viewership rating of 0. 8% when it's just going to start? And it's even the average rating? Teacher Jong, weren't you promising to leave too easily earlier? If they could not hit the requested viewership ratings, then Jong Yi would automatically quit. Even though the team was supposedly led by Fu Sihong, everyone knew that the real leader was actually Jong Yi. Everything revolved around Jong Yi's existence. If he went, then the program would be cancelled as well. The team's members would all face an uncertain future from here on out. An average of 0.8%. There hadn't been any singing program this year that had hit that number yet. Even if the later episodes of Do You Remember finished airing, the average would surely not hit 0.8%. At most it would be 0.7% or so. Hachichi said, Teacher Jong, you should have made a bargain just now. We also added, yeah, a nationwide viewership rating of 0.6% was still possible to work toward, but 0.8% is really too difficult. If they really want a viewership rating of 0.8%, that would mean the program would have to place first in the same time period across the nation, and it's even going to have a large lead over second place. Can we accomplish such a task? Everyone was feeling extremely stressed. Fu Sihong also kept shaking his head. However, only Zhong Yi looked like he was not bothered by it and even appeared very relaxed. He kept his smile without seeming the least bit worried because he did not feel that a viewership rating of 0.8% was demanding at all. Instead, he even felt that this was low, so low that he nearly laughed at it. Ha ha! 0.8%? Can't hit that number? You guys are insulting me. You're all too looking down on me, Zhong Yi. If the voice really gets a viewership rating of 0.8%, then would I still have wasted so much effort to try to do this program? If you used 0.8% and doubled it, that would be more like it. That's the figure that should be used as the estimate and goal. But of course, Zhong Yi would not tell them all this. Because only Zhong Yi knew of the logic defying viewership ratings of the voice back in his world. Even if he told people that, they would definitely not believe him. It was not a viewership rating that should be described with a zero point rating. The voice of his previous world was to be described with a viewership rating that broke past the zero barrier. Let's wait and see. When the viewership ratings for the voice come out, all of you will understand just how expansive the sky is. First place for the same time period? First place for the entire term of all variety programs, that was what Zhong Yi's expectation for the voice was. Chapter 636 Public Outcry Later that afternoon. It was time to leave from Central TV. Fu Sihong had gone home. But Zhong Yi stayed behind and also asked the others to stay as well and called them to a spacious performance studio. This was the studio that Central TV Department 1 had allocated for their new program and was pretty large in area. It was previously being used by a talent show program and the place has not been cleared out yet. There were still some light boxes lying around on the ground and in some corners. In terms of its size, Zhong Yi was quite satisfied with it. A station like Central TV did not have a lack of venues. Compared to those other satellite channels, at which some programs had to share a venue between themselves and two or three other programs, Central TV's standout points were that they had large places, a good policy, as well as many employees. I'm afraid that it will be too rushed tomorrow, so I want to delegate some tasks first. It probably won't take up more than 15 minutes of everyone's time. Zhong Yi asked, Has the green light for the funding been given? Ha Chichi said, it's been given. We have 20 million. Zhong Yi nodded, then pointed around the venue and said, this is where our program will be filmed. The station still takes quite good care of us since they've allocated the largest performance studio to us. I won't do things like asking everyone to shout some team motto or whatever. There's no need for unnecessary stuff like that. Everything still boils down to what we show by our practical actions. And because I'm still unfamiliar with what every one of you here specializes in, I took the initiative to plan out the tasks first. If any one of you is responsible for the job I mention or think that you're up for it, please tell me. Okay. No problem. 
Just give us your instructions, Director Zhong. Everyone listened intently. Zhong Yi said, these tasks relate to the progress of the program's production, so I need everyone to do them well. The first thing is in regard to the website. Our new program will need to have a microsite on the website of Central TV Department 1 or have a standalone website of its own. Its purpose will be promoting and updating the latest news on our program and act as a platform to interact with the public. In the future, there will also be spontaneous polls for audiences to take part in, so I don't think I need to emphasize how important this is. I want two people to be in charge of the content for this and to network with the main Central TV website team to get it up and running. A female editor said, let me handle it, that's my specialty. A young male editor looked to his left and right before he raised his hand and said, count me in two. I was from the department that handled the official website before I came here, so I know quite a few people who I could get help from to code the microsite and prioritize it for us. Zhong Yi said, good, thank you then. The female and male editors said together at once, you're welcome. Zhong Yi continued, the next thing is in regard to the preparations for the preliminary auditions. Sister Chi, I leave this to you. Please approach the station first for some marketing and promotional resources, like the reservations for a television commercial slot, or website advertisement banner position so that we can put out information like the registration contact number and application methods. After that, set aside a time and arrange for the applicants to come in waves for the preliminary auditions. Although the actual audition will be done in the studio and recorded, there is still a need to do a preliminary audition so we can pick out the contestants who fit the vocal requirements of show. Ha Chichi responded, sure, just leave that to me. Zhong Yi gave her a heads up on this and said, your task will be the most difficult one, but it's also the most important and critical part of the program. If you need more help, you can allocate more people to your team. Ha Chichi laughed and said, good, it's good timing since we're expecting more people to join our program team tomorrow. Then last, but not least, the venue layout and equipment. Zhong Yi looked at Zhong Zhuo and said, Brother Zhong, I leave this recording studio's work to you, so please help us to take control of that. Assistant Director Zhong Zhuo said, Sure, what requests do you have? Zhong Yi said, How is the quality of the audio equipment of our central TV department one as well as the studio equipment? Zhong Zhuo blinked a few times and said, It's pretty good. It won't be any lousier than the other satellite channel's equipment at least. Most of what we have are professional-grade hardware, with some of it being internationally top-tier equipment. They were fitted just last year, but some others are a little older, though still considered higher-end equipment in the country. Overall, it's not too shabby. When Zhong Yi heard that, he shook his head, that's not going to cut it. The stage for our new program depends greatly on the audio quality, so even if just some of it is not too bad, that means it's still not good enough. If that's the case, then it would mean our setup is just SOSO. My principles when it comes to making a program is to either make it the best in the industry or not do it at all. That's why, when it comes to the equipment and setup, we need it to be the very best. I won't accept any shortcomings, especially in the area of audio quality. If Central TV has the necessary hardware to support our requirements, then we will borrow them. If not then we will have to find something we can rent, but if they aren't even available for rent, then we will buy them. Jongs were received a fright from this. Buy it ourselves? Ha Chichi also said nervously, but we don't have enough budget to buy them. Zhong Yi, who was also not too familiar with the market price, asked, how much do we need? You might not be aware of it. Jongs were said, if you really intend to get brand new, top-tier equipment, then the whole setup would cost over 10 million, minimum. That's already a very conservative estimate, and would include having already borrowed some items from the station. The kind of setup you're aiming for would burn a big hole in our pockets, so if you want something that is the very, very best, it could amount to several tens of millions. On top of that, there's also the troublesome portion of the technicalities. Since it would be a totally new setup, our staff would still need some time to pick up and learn how to operate it. With the 20 million in funding from our station, it's... Zhong Yi frowned. Even with the scenario of the program team borrowing most of the top-tier equipment from the station, it would still cost over 10 million. It was too expensive. It was too damn expensive. But Zhong Yi still said firmly, try to borrow first. 
If that doesn't work out, buy them. Zhongs was said, then wouldn't we have no money left over to do other things? Zhong Yi said, the equipment must be ready before everything else, so the pressure will be on your side. No matter what it takes, the props and equipment must be the best. Don't you all worry about the funding, I will think of a way. Let me handle whatever that needs to be handled on the back end. Okay, I understand. Zhongzhuo was also turning steadfast now that Zhong Yi had given his word to back them up. He did not have to bother about anything else anymore, so he said, I will communicate with the equipment department tonight and write a list of items we require. If Central TV does not have them, I'll get their purchasing manager to help quote a figure. Zhong Yi nodded and said, Good, then that's about it. Since the tasks have been allocated, everyone, please go home and rest well. Starting tomorrow, we will have a tough battle to fight. Wu Yi was a little surprised. He said, Director Zhong. Yes? Zhong Yi was still quite unused to being addressed in that way. Wu Yi asked, Is that all for the tasks? What about the promotional copy? Zhong Yi said, Oh, I will handle that. Wu Yi said in surprise, the invitation for the coaches to join the program. Zhong Yi said, I will contact them. Wu Yi was becoming even more surprised now. So he said, then the advertising copy. Zhong Yi said, when the website is ready, I will write it. Wu Yi said, then would you also possibly be handling the participating and title sponsors? Zhong Yi said, leave that to me as well. Ah? Ha Chichi looking a little embarrassed, said, how can you handle all that by yourself? Those tasks are too broad. Why don't you delegate some to me? I still have the capacity to handle a little more. The other members of the program team also scrambled to offer their help to Zhong Yi. However, Zhong Yi waved them off and said, there's no need for that, we'll talk about it again. For some of the more important and trickier to handle tasks, Zhong Yi decided that he would take them on himself. Even though he was already an executive director, he did not leave all the work to others. Why would he let others do all the dirty work while he sat in the office sipping tea and relaxing? If he did that, the others would not be convinced by him. So Zhong Yi decided that he would get down to work as well. Besides, he was not the type who could sit around doing nothing and not feel bored. With the voice of China about to make its imminent premiere, he was also itching to do as much as he could. Even if he were forced to rest, he couldn't do it since he was well known for being a workaholic. The meeting ended. Most of the team's staff left work, while some voluntarily stayed behind to clock some overtime, for instance the assistant directors, Zhong Zui and Ha Chichi. Since Zhong Yi was already very clear with his instructions, they couldn't slack off either. A viewership rating of 0.8% was too great a goal. The pressure they were facing was enormous, so they knew that they had to try their very best this time. Zhong Yi did not work overtime because Chen Chen was still with him at the television station. He didn't mind working late or staying behind in the office, but Chen Chen couldn't, so after he prepared a simple advertising copy for the preliminary auditions for Ha Chichi, he took Chen Chen home for dinner. That night, the official website of Central TV Department 1 started running a promotional ad for a new program. Central TV Department 1 joins hands with Zhong Yi. Auditions for a large-scale singing talent show are beginning. Below the title was an introduction for the program, regardless of looks, height, age, or occupation, as long as you're blessed with a good voice and hold a strong passion for music, come and register for the auditions immediately. What are you still waiting for? Registration Hotline 1, 400 minus 8 x times x times x times x. Registration Hotline 2, 400 minus 8 x times x times x times x. Liaison, the Voice of China program team. Actually, the ad was placed in a spot that wasn't too good. After all, this wasn't some television commercial. However, it was exactly this inconspicuous program ad that had created a stir online. Just one minute after the ad was posted, already a new thread had been created with an accompanying screenshot. Heavens! Zhong Yi has a new program. Oh my god! That's too fast! Yeah, didn't Zhong Yi just started work at Central TV Department 1 today? How could he already have news of a new program in the evening when he only started work in the morning? What kind of efficiency is that? Teacher Zhong is indeed the celebrated, fastest draw in the industry.
whether it's in producing programs or advertisements, there's only one way to describe it, fast. But why is it a singing talent show? Zhong Yi is making yet another singing program? Damn it, I was still predicting that he would do a reality show. How did it turn into a singing talent show? Why did it turn out to be a singing talent show? It's a totally different genre from what I had expected. The Voice of China? What a terrible name. F asterisk asterisk K, could this really be Zhong Yi's new program? As the thread heated up, countless netizens rushed over to take a look. This included many television industry insiders as well. They were all very concerned about this topic. A verified industry insider from Beihe Provincial Television Station said, regardless of looks, regardless of occupation, regardless of age, can a talent show be done in such a way? What's the selling point of the program then? At first glance, it feels like this is a very innovative idea, but if this is a talent show, then the program would barely be watched by anyone. At most, it would be a program that would gain a cult following. I believe the viewer ratings won't pass 0.4%. Another industry insider also said, to be honest, I'm quite disappointed at this. Having seen Zhong Yi's previously proposed program Do You Remember? I ended up having great expectations for his new program to be another innovative work just like his Zhong Yi's talk show and Do You Remember? But what is the meaning of the voice of China? Regardless of looks and age? That has to be some sort of a gimmick, right? It's impossible that a television station would dare to go against the market trends and practices like this. This program will surely end up just like any other traditional singing talent show that is no different from the others. Therefore I cannot understand why Zhong Yi would still jump into such a genre when such programs are so abundantly broadcast with up to four or five such shows per month. Isn't the audience already getting sick of them? A third industry insider said, I don't get it either. For someone who is able to create such an innovative show like Do You Remember? Why did Zhong Yi not choose to take another path and instead walk a road that is packed with countless other competitors? If this were the case, then why did he sell Do You Remember back then and not leave it for himself instead? Someone raised a doubt, based on Zhong Yi's experience, it's impossible that he did not take that into consideration. Could it be just as they had advertised it, that the singing program will only be focused on vocals alone? That's quite impossible. Yeah, no one would dare to do such a thing. If it were really a talent show that only focuses on vocals alone, who would want to watch such a show? That would be worse than the current singing programs that we have, wouldn't it? The television industry insiders were generally quite pessimistic about the chances of this new program similar to how those veterans at Central TV Department 1 felt earlier. The netizens' reactions were much more diverse. Zhong Yi's hardcore fans were supporting the new show without any hesitation. Supporting teacher Zhong. It won't go wrong if it's Zhong Yi's production. Ha ha, looking forward to teacher Zhong's new show. Experience tells us not to doubt teacher Zhong's decision no matter what. Otherwise, once the dust clears, you'll find that your face has become swollen. Right, although I also do not understand where the profoundness of the voice of China lies at, I will still support teacher Zhong unconditionally. There's nothing else to say except to tune into the program on time. Teacher Zhong's show will definitely be a good watch. He has never disappointed us before in the past, present, and will not disappoint us in the future either. Well said. Zhong Yi's fan club has gathered. Let's help teacher Zhong promote and forward it. However, there were also other netizens who were not optimistic about it. A talent show that only focus on vocals? That won't get much of an audience at all. That's right. If there's someone who looks terribly ugly with a height of 1.4 meters, even if he sings really well, no one could like him, right? Who wants to look at someone like that? If I watch that, I want it to be a pretty lady. Agreed. Just listening to the vocals is not too reliable, right? Although I would like to agree that a singer should have good vocals as a main attraction, looks are still very important. They are public personalities no matter what, so they need to look friendly to others at the very least, isn't that true? Is Zhong Yi intending to undermine the traditional singing talent show genre? I agree with what the industry insider said earlier. It's definitely a gimmick that they're claiming that only the voice will be used to judge the contestants. 
it's just a bluff that's being used to confuse everyone. The show will still be carried out in the old way. Then there's even less reason to watch it. Yeah, there are too many singing talent shows these days. What is Zhong Yi trying to do? What is Central TV Department 1 doing? Zhong Yi is indeed Zhong Yi. The way he does things has always left everyone unable to understand why he does them that way. Just a tiny banner ad on the Central TV website had created such a big reaction from so many people on the internet. It was probably only Zhong Yi who could invoke such a reaction, as that guy's name itself already represented controversy. No matter how famous he was or how much he had achieved, just his personality that dared to do what no one else dared to was enough to put him in the same breath as controversy. Nothing could be done about this. After all, this was how the entertainment industry worked. Chapter 637 Pulling for Advertising Sponsorships The next day. In the morning. John Yi, wake up. Chen Chen pushed him. John Yi rolled over and said drowsily, don't disturb me. Chen Chen pushed harder and said, John Yi, get up. John Yi, get up. Chen Chen was like a little alarm clock and proved to be more effective than any other alarm clock. Zhong Yi was so affected that he could not sleep anymore and helplessly got out of the bed while yawning away. He then went out to buy breakfast for Chen Chen without even washing his face. At a stall selling breakfast outside the district. Many people were sitting in the open air area and enjoying their breakfast. Yo, little Zhong. Teacher Zhong, you're awake? Good morning, Teacher Zhong. Brother Zhong, you're here for breakfast? The old neighbors and the vendor of the breakfast stall greeted Zhong Yi in the way they always did. Some of the people who did not live around here or were just passing by, and having breakfast here for the first time were clearly clueless about what was going on. When they saw Zhong Yi's sloppy image walking leisurely toward them, some of them nearly peed their pants from being shocked and dumbfounded. F asterisk asterisk K, wasn't that Zhong Yi? They could even bump into a B-list celebrity while having breakfast? Their first reaction was that they must have seen something wrong. How could a B list celebrity dress so sloppily and come out onto the streets? Besides, who had ever encountered such a big shot celebrity eating their breakfast at such a dirty, everyday stall? Were they shooting a TV drama or a movie? But why were there no director or cameras to be seen anywhere? There were all kinds of thoughts. John Yi greeted the old neighbors and then said to the vendor, I'll have three fried dough sticks and two bowls of tofu pudding. Carry out. Then he took a seat listlessly. At this moment, a reporter who was lying in ambush at a nearby spot came running out towards him. Holding out a recording pen, he interviewed him, saying, Teacher Zhong, I'm from Entertainment Weekly magazine. Zhong Yi said as he fought his droopy eyelids, Oh, hello. The reporter said, I heard that after you joined Central TV Department 1, the new program The Voice of China is already undergoing production preparations, but many industry insiders and audience members do not seem to acknowledge it. They've raised many doubts and feel that it would be a mistake to subvert the concept of the talent shows, and that it would conflict with the market trends. Zhong Yi said, oh. The reporter immediately asked, what is your view on that? Zhong Yi said, nothing much. The reporter exclaimed, are you confident about your new program? Passable. John Yi said. The reporter was shocked and said, ah? What do you mean by passable? Are you not confident about it at all? SOSO, John Yi said. That reporter was puzzled. This shouldn't be John Yi's style. Shouldn't he be more outraged? Wasn't he supposed to come up with a poem or two to scold those doubters? Wasn't he supposed to give a strong and spirited comeback at those people? What the heck was with this attitude? Why was he so dispirited today? This was not his style at all. As an entertainment reporter, he was not used to Zhong Yi's current indifferent attitude. After a barrage of questions, Zhong Yi was answering like he was still half asleep and had absolutely no fighting spirit. Doubts? Criticism? Zhong Yi was already numb to all of these. Not only him, as long as they were in the entertainment industry, no one could escape from it. Wasn't Zhong Yuanqi famous as well? Wasn't she reputable? Wasn't she popular? 
those who scolded her would still scold her every day and those who doubted her would still continue to doubt her, let alone Zhong Yi. He was more interested in getting his breakfast and going back to sleep a while longer before heading to work. Later in the morning. At Central TV. When Zhong Yi led Chen Chen into the office, they heard someone speaking in a loud voice. Fu Sihong said, we are spending all of the 20 million on this. Zhongs were grunted, uh. Fu Sihong asked, was it even necessary to use all of that 20 million to purchase the equipment? Zhongs were replied, it was instructed by Director Zhong. Zhong Yi also joined in and asked, Brother Fu, what's the matter? When Fu Sihong saw Zhong Yi, he had a face full of displeasure. Then he said, Teacher Zhong, you might be in charge of the program production but for such a big matter, but shouldn't you at least discuss it with me beforehand? If all of the 20 million was going to spent on equipment for the set, then what about the other expenses? How would we be able to invite the coaches? How can we pay for the contestants' transport, food, and accommodation? And as for all other miscellaneous expenses, how will we deal with those? Your decision this time was too rash. John Yi said, yesterday, I wanted to meet with you on this but you'd already left, so I intended to tell you about it this morning. We can't scrimp on what's essential and must spend on what's necessary. We cannot afford to be indecisive on such things as this is also a responsibility for the program and audience. Fu Sihong retorted with a question, how do we solve the lack of funding then? Zhong Yi said, I'm preparing to apply for more funding from director Jiang. Jiang Yuan happened to be just outside the office and heard a little of their conversation, so he asked, what do you want to apply from me? It was a habit of his to make the rounds at the respective program teams every day before he started work. When Fu Sihong saw that the leader had arrived, he immediately reported to him about the situation. After hearing about the situation, Jiang Yuan was also very shocked. He said, you're going to spend 20 million on purchasing the equipment for the stage set? Zhong Yi nodded and said, yes. Is there really such a need? Jiang Yuan could not understand his motivation. Zhong Yi said, this is a must if we want to guarantee a high viewer rating. We can't save on this amount of money because what we're selling is the quality of vocals. Jiang Yuan said, we already have the basic equipment in the station, are they really so different from those top tier equipment? Most people would probably not be able to differentiate it, right? Zhong Yi shook his head and said, this was something I did some research into last night. During the television broadcast transmission, if the equipment used is different, the quality and performance of the sound and other aspects would not be as good. That is also the reason why those top-tier equipment are so expensive. Director Jiang, you have to trust me on this and leave the production of the program to me. Give me a little more funding for the program and I will surely return the trust with a program that exceeds all expectation in terms of the viewership ratings. Jiang Yuan immediately said, you've spent 20 million just like that, so no matter how much more is given to you, it won't be enough. Zhong Yi shouted, but you can't just make a horse constantly run without feeding it. The station has set a 0.8% viewership rating as a target. Everyone knows that this number will be difficult to hit, but if we want to reach this target, then we must invest proportionately. In fact, the amount invested now will be returned by multiple times that in the future. But if the investment now is discounted, then the future viewership ratings will also be discounted. Jiang Yuan spoke, the details of the new program and auditions were already released yesterday. You should have seen the response online. Other than your fans, everyone else did not have high expectations for this program. The overall market response was also quite negative. I know that the program is still in pre-production and the final product is not out yet, so no one knows how it will turn out. But the reaction of the audience and their expectations are also a kind of feedback, so me approving more funding to you really puts me in a very difficult situation. I'm unable to make the decision on my own. John Yi wasn't too happy either. Oh, before he came here, he was promised to be given full control with complete support and extensive funding. But when he was ready to produce the program, he was given all sorts of excuses. Why was it so difficult just to get some things done? He knew that Central TV had its advantage in that it had a huge amount of resources. But similarly, it also had its disadvantage, the traditional thinking of the organization. They always sought stability in their projects and were afraid of bearing responsibility. 
with such a culture, it would be difficult to do anything and things would surely get delayed. Fu Sihong asked, how much do you still need? You have to at least give us an estimation. Zhong Yi honestly said, at least 60 million more. Jiang Yuan immediately responded, that's impossible. Even if the response from the audience is good, the station will still not grant 80 million renminbi in production fees. Do you know the total budgeted production expenses for this year's Central TV Department 1's programs? So how can just you alone take up so much of it just like that? Unless you can sell the title of the program and get the money ahead of the broadcast, then with advertisement revenue injected, the funding you require will be met. But these days, singing programs are saturating the market, thus leading to a market downturn. In the eyes of those companies, it would not be wise to buy a title. For other similarly performing singing talent shows with good viewership ratings, the title money can only fetch around 20 million renminbi or so, while many others can only price their titles like a cabbage at the market, and sell it for less than 10 million renminbi with the advertising rights fee even less. That is the current situation of the market, so even if you manage to land a 20 million title sponsorship, it is still not close to your requested amount and would not be enough for you to use. 10 or 20 million. The title sponsorships of this world were that low? That might also be true. If there were no good programs and with variety programs continuing to be in a downturn while the market shrank and the audience base dispersed, the title sponsorship rights would also naturally decline in value. But what if there was a good program? What if there was a television program that could sweep all the other programs off their feet in the variety world? Then the title sponsorship would definitely not be something that was worth just tens of millions. Zhong Yi believed, no, to be accurate, he knew that The Voice would be a world-class program which defied all logic. That was why he had high expectations of the title sponsorship and already had designs on this large piece of the pie. Zhong Yi immediately said, Director Jiang, so what you mean is that the title sponsorship can directly be injected into the program team's funding, and be allocated freely by me? Jiang Yuan looked at him and said, your program hasn't even been finalized yet, so how could you find any sponsors? Fu Sihong looked at Zhong Yi as though he were a layman and said, normally, we would have to at least confirm the core team and guests for the television program before we contact the sponsors and advertisers. Right now, we only have a program plan and the coaches have also not been decided yet, so which company would dare buy the title sponsorship? That would be too hasty. Besides, if they bought the title sponsorship at this point, the price would also not be very high. At most it would work out to a base price. Zhong Yi probed, but it will be our funding, right? Jiang Yuan said, yes, as long as you can sell it, I can decide to give you the full sum of the title sponsorship. But as for the fees other than the title sponsorship, like the advertising rights fees, all of those must go to Central TV Department 1. You can't touch it, and neither can I. Zhong Yi smiled and said, all right then. That's just what he wanted to hear. If you aren't going to be supportive, then I will think of a way by myself. At this moment, Zhong Yi felt that it was time to work on his eloquence. The amount of money he needed to bring in would be dependent on how well he used his mouth. If he could really restore that world-renowned program, The Voice, from his previous world back as it was, and do it well, he definitely couldn't skimp on the production costs. Otherwise, he would be better off not doing it at all. Chapter 638 Would you believe it? Day. The leader left. The program team's office of the voice was filled with whisperings. Teacher Zhong is really eyeing the title sponsorship? But it hasn't even started production yet. Where's he going to get that from? Even if he could get some company to sponsor it, it wouldn't be much. It's definitely not going to be enough for Teacher Zhong's budget, so what's he going to do? The remaining money that we have is not even enough to sign a few B-list celebrities as the program's coaches, right? The station is also to blame. Why don't they just give us a little more? Actually, 20 million is already a lot. If not for the station giving us the green light, just look at the other program's production costs, they're not even close to 10 million, right? It's just because Teacher Jong's ideal program requires too much money. I wonder what kind of coaches Teacher Jong is intending to invite when he said that he wanted 80 million in total production money. Could he be thinking of getting some heavenly kings and queens to be the judges and coaches? 
being able to sign those S-list celebrities. It would be difficult to invite them even if we had a lot of money, isn't that so? We definitely won't understand what director Jong is thinking. Teacher Jong is really trying too hard to chase perfection. I just hope that the program will become popular, or else the money we spend will really all be lost. Ari, I guess we can only leave it to Zhong Yi from here. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others were still relatively calm in this situation. In contrast the other editors and writers were unable to sit still any longer. In the executive director's office. Little Wang came in and asked, were you looking for me? Chen Chen grabbed Zhong Yi's cell phone and went to the sofa to play some games. Zhong Yi said to Little Wang, yes, Little Wang. Help me to compile a list of big companies that we can contact, preferably those enterprise or corporation level companies, like the ones that sell herbal tea or milk. If you don't have their information, find the relevant central TV department to request for a copy. I need to contact some of them regarding the title sponsorship matter, so please hurry on that. Little Wang responded, sure. About 20 minutes later, the list of companies and contact numbers was ready. Zhong Yi browsed through the company names but as he was still quite unfamiliar with the companies of this world, he did not know which one was better, so he decided to just give them all a call. Hello, is this Daily Milk? Yes. I'm calling from Central TV Department 1's The Voice of China. This is the executive director of the program team speaking. Oh. We are currently preparing a new, large-scale singing talent show and the exclusive title sponsorship is still available, so I would like to ask if your company is interested. I can tell you more about our show. Sorry, we are currently not looking for any opportunities in this area. All right then, thank you. If we are interested, we will contact you again. Okay. Then he made the next call. This time, Zhong Yi wised up. He began to speak persuasively with charm. Hello, is this Armand T? Yes, and you? I am Zhong Yi from Central TV Station. Ah? You're Zhong Yi? Which Zhong Yi? I should be the Zhong Yi that you're thinking about. Ayo, hey why did you call us for? Our new program has just started production on our new program. It's going to be on Central TV Department 1's Thursday evening slot, but the title sponsorship has not been confirmed yet. Although the competition between the corporations is getting quite heated, we are still not too satisfied with them as the product's image does not mirror our program's image. That is why someone recommended your company to us. And since I'm also a frequent customer of your product and find it quite delicious, I called to ask if your company would be interested. Oh, I understand. Please wait a moment, I will check with my leader. Okay. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Teacher Zhong. Our leader has informed me that our company has just taken an advertising deal with Central TV Department 1's Friday drama slot. We don't intend to do any advertising during a singing program for now since the market for variety programs isn't too good currently. Oh, what a shame then. He made a continuous seven or eight calls. Zhong Yi only had one strategy, and that was to first tell them where he was calling from, then with a flurry of words, he would persuade them with praises first, such as saying how he felt that their company was the one who among others was the best, or telling them how this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that had arrived at their doorsteps and that they should really grab at the chance, or else live to regret it. In any case, he just tried to sell them the title sponsorship using praises and talk of wasted opportunities. However, not one of them responded positively. When they heard that it was a variety program, everyone rejected his offer. In the end, when Zhong Yi got tired of making calls, he gulped down a few glasses of water. He was quite angry at this outcome, thinking of what the hell was going on. Did anyone even know what sort of a program this was? This was The Voice. The reputable and famous program worldwide that was called The Voice. Back in Zhong Yi's previous world, the title sponsorship for The Voice was a sky-high figure which did not even need anyone to go around begging others to buy it. Without stepping out of the television station's door, the advertisers would make their interest known and try to outbid each other for the rights to the title sponsorship. But now? Zhong Yi's mouth was already worn out from all those calls but none of the companies were interested in buying the title sponsorship. Some of these companies even assumed Zhong Yi to be a scammer and hung up on the phone immediately. 
that made Zhong Yi not know whether to laugh or cry. You fail to see the great product. You people really don't consider the steamed bun stuffed with sweet and bin paste to be food. A program like The Voice that had conquered people's hearts all around the world was now in such a sorry state. But that was not surprising at all since there was no precedent of a program like this in this world. It wasn't his fault that the values of this world's singing programs were totally different from his previous world. The emergence of a new product was always going to face doubt and resistance since no one understood it well enough. But what could be done now? Sell it for cheap? That's not possible. Even if everyone did not know the great value of being the title sponsor to The Voice, it did not mean that it had no value. Even if he had to hold it in his hands, Zhong Yi would not consider selling it for cheap. This would be disrespecting the hard work of his predecessors. But if he had to sell it for cheap, he would sell it to someone he knew. Someone he knew? Oh, right. Zhong Yi suddenly thought of a person. Wu Mo. Now that was really someone he knew well, what with Wu Mo being Wu Zeqing's nephew as well as the CEO of the Brain Gold Company. Zhong Yi's eyes lit up as he immediately grabbed his phone back from Chen Chen, saying, Stop playing. Chen Chen would not have any of it and said, Zhong Yi, give it back. Uncle has some serious work to do now. Zhong Yi scrolled to Wu Mo's contact in his contacts and gave him a call. Do do do, it only took three rings before Wu Mo's spirited voice came from the other end, ha ha ha, brother Zhong. My benefactors has called. Zhong Yi laughed and said, CEO Wu, what are you busy with? Wu Mo said happily, nothing, I'm just lazing around at home. Whoa, you're that free. That's good then. Let's go out for a drink, I have something that I need to discuss with you. As Zhong Yi was considerably close to him, it was also easy for him to talk to Wu Mo. Wu Mo did not hesitate and said, Sure, I'll pick you up. Zhong Yi said, But you're a tycoon worth billions. How would that be suitable? Wu Mo said, Brother Zhong, aren't you making me feel disgraceful now? Without your endorsement and advertisement, would your brother be here today? I will go pick you up, that is a must. It has been a while since we've met and I also intended to go look for you anyway. Fine then. So shall we meet at the entrance of Central TV Tower? Zhong Yi asked. Oh, I just remembered. You've gone to work at Central TV now. Sure then, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Wu Mo ended the call after he said that. When Zhong Yi put down his cell phone, he was already preparing his speech for later. He should have really thought of Wu Mo earlier. Ever since that viral advertisement, Brain Gold sales figures had risen like it was attached to the top of a launched rocket. It went from being an enterprise on the verge of bankruptcy to becoming the market leader of health products. It was rumored that the management of Wu Mo's company had an internal target to be listed at the end of two years. With the business developing at such a rapid pace, Wu Mo's net worth was now staggering, though Zhong Yi did not know what the exact figure was. If Wu Mo bought the title sponsorship, it would first solve Zhong Yi's pressing problems of getting additional funding, and second, ensure that the benefits of the deal would not be given to any other outsiders. It would allow Brain Gold to ride on the coattails of the voice's imminent rise and certainly allow its sales to be increased several fold more. As Wu Zeqing's unpublicized boyfriend, there was no reason not to take care and look out for her nephew. After calming Chen Chen down, Zhong Yi got Ha Chichi to help him look after her and went out to meet with Wu Mo. Underneath the tower. The two of them met up. Brother Zhong. CEO Wu, it looks like you've been enjoying life? Hi, I've been eating too much lately. Come, let's get in the car to talk. Sure, let's find a coffee house. After getting into Wu Mo's new luxury car he had swapped to recently, they drove off. Wu Mo spoke as he drove, what did you want to tell me about? Well, let me be direct with you then. Zhong Yi laughed a little and continued, I don't know how familiar you are with the title sponsorship and related advertising opportunities on television programs. Wu Mo blinked and said, title sponsorship. How could I not know about that? Didn't the success of our Brain Gold product happen all because of the extensive advertising campaign? Zhong Yi said, then it will be easier to explain. Wu Mo heartily asked, what about it? Your new program is seeking a title sponsor? Then that won't be a problem at all. How much is it? I just need a word from you. 
my brother Jong's program definitely won't go wrong. Zhong Yi laughed and said, don't promise me too soon. I suggest you listen to what I have to say first. Yes, I am thinking of roping you in to join as the title sponsor, but my program's title sponsorship won't be sold for anything less than 100 million renminbi. Screech! The car came to a screeching halt by the side of the road. Wu Mo asked dumbfounded, what? Please say again? Zhong Yi cleared his throat and said, 100 million. Wu Mo was nearly close to tears when he spoke, Brother Zhong, I'm not well educated, so don't try to fool me. But what sort of program are you producing? Even if it's an advertisement during news simulcast, it shouldn't cost 100 million, right? I think I saw some news last night about the program that you're doing for Central TV Department 1. It's a singing program? I didn't remember incorrectly, right? Zhong Yi nodded and remarked, you're right. Wu Mo said, but the market for singing programs is in a downturn at the moment, isn't it? As far as I know, the exclusive title sponsorships are generally in the range of 10 to 20 million renminbi at most. But of course, I know that your program will surely be different from theirs. They have got nothing on you, so I think that 30 million renminbi should already be a ballpark figure. Zhong Yi shook his head and said, that's far from it. Wu Mo was still extremely trusting of Zhong Yi, so he stated, I'm sure you wouldn't say that without a reason. Why don't you tell me what the situation is like instead? Zhong Yi explained, I won't touch on the program's technicalities, and the market trend issues for now since even industry insiders do not seem to grasp that fully, let alone you. But what I can tell you right now, is that this program that no one has any expectations of will gain a viewership rating that you cannot even begin to imagine. If you become the title sponsor of this program, I can assure you that, even with 200 million, you would not be making a loss. Wu Mo asked, what sort of a viewership rating are we talking about? Zhong Yi said, think big. Wu Mo said, 0.9%. Zhong Yi said, even bigger. Wu Mo said, 1.3%. Zhong Yi said, you can up that a bit more. After holding it in for a long time, Wu Mo daringly said, could it be 1.6%? Zhong Yi laughed and said, if I told you that the figure of 1.6% is just for the start, would you believe it? Chapter 639 The Voice's Astronomical Title Sponsorship Fee Ah? For a start? The 1.6% viewership ratings is just the starting figure? Wu Mo was stunned in astonishment, how can a singing talent show program have that high of a viewership rating? In the past two years alone, I believe that none of them has garnered more than 1% of the viewership ratings before. Zhong Yi shrugged and said, the key here is that my program has the potential to have such a high viewership rating. What you should be aware of here is that if a program can hit 1.6% and above, it will generate a different effect and discussion for its advertisers. Compared to those programs with only 0.5%, it is definitely not an effect that can be combined by stacking them together, but something that is exponentially better. So if we calculate it this way, based on three singing programs that have viewership ratings of 0.5% each, their total title sponsorship fees should be around the region of about 50 million renminbi. With that, even if I were to double the final figure, I don't think I'm asking for too much, am I? Wu Mo nodded and said, if you calculate it that way, then it's really not a lot, but... Zhong Yi did not wait for him to finish, but added on, the problem right now is that the program has not even started airing yet, so there are no viewership ratings or market response data available. Even if I were to persuade you with all that I have, it is still only my words and perspective that you can take. Other people might perceive what I say to them as boasting or touting my own program's potential, so choose not to believe me. That's why it is useless for me to talk too much with them. If they don't wish to believe me, they will not believe me. This was also the current embarrassing state of Zhong Yi and the voice. If others did not believe him or chose not to buy the title sponsorship, what could he do about it? He couldn't possibly hold it and just wait for the program to start broadcasting first, right? But without the title sponsorship fee, how would he be able to produce the program? There was no way it would make it to broadcasting, so this was a dead-end situation. Everything depended on this. Wu Mo was silent. Zhong Yi smiled and stated, but CEO Wu, you should know what kind of a person I am. When it comes my work, I never boast about what I can achieve. 
If I claim that I can make the program hit that viewership rating, then I can definitely do so and it won't get any lower than that, only higher. Today's not the first day you've known me. We've even worked together for some time now, so whether or not there's any qualifications to my claims, I'm sure you know better than anyone. Wumo agreed, we did more than just work together. Everyone outside says that I had the vision and luck to have met Zhong Yi and was so brave to have used that brainwashing advertisement. But only myself and some of my company's internal staff know that I didn't have the courage or vision they claimed. If it were not for you assuring me at that time that this advertisement would surely save my company, if not for your constant persuasion to force me to use it and even offering to return the endorsement fees if it failed, then I wouldn't be here today enjoying the success of the Brain Gold product. That was why when a few people suggested in a recent company meeting to change the Brain Gold advertisement after it ran for some time, I only responded to them with this. Zhong Yi has said before that the Brain Gold advertisement could be used for another 10 years without change. When it comes to advertisements, I only believe in Zhong Yi and no one else. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Thank you. Wu Mo glanced at him and asked, Can I believe in you as well this time? Zhong Yi explained, You can rest assured. The core of the program is the voice, to allow singers to return to their basics in the music indus, Wu Mo said, Don't explain to me the technicalities of the program. Just give me your word. Zhong Yi pondered for a moment before saying firmly, you can fully put your trust in me. On this matter, I would never cheat you. Even if I were to cheat someone else, I would not do it to you. He was speaking the truth, as after all, if he cheated Wu Zuching's nephew, his girlfriend would surely come looking for him. I will also be honest with you here because we're friends. The reason that the title sponsorship fee costs 100 million renminbi is because our program team requires the money urgently to start production while Central TV is being very conservative with the budget, and did not approve of our request to increase the funding. It ended up with me having to find my own ways to get more production budget. If we did not lack any money, even if you offered us 50 million for the title sponsorship fee right now, I would not say anything about it. Of course, I'll add that if you really buy it from us at 100 million, this money would definitely still be worth it. With more money, we can increase the quality of the program and the viewership ratings will also be better, which would also serve your advertising much better too. On top of that, your company will surely claim this year's label of title sponsorship king, so that would benefit your group in terms of the advertising effect too. Having listened to everything, Wu Mo smiled and acknowledged, all right then, I will listen to you on the matters of advertising. Not only are you my spokesman for the Brain Gold advertisement, you're also our company's advertising planner and consultant. If it's 100 million, so be it. When can we sign the contract? Why don't you go get it ready and I will sign it any time? Seeing him agree so readily, Zhong Yi began to feel a little embarrassed. He said, why don't you think about it some more first? Wu Mo gave a wave of his hands and said, there's no need to consider. To be honest, the money that the company has now was only earned because of your advertisement campaign. If I think of it that way, I don't feel any pinch at all no matter how much you want us to invest. John Yi smiled cheerfully and stated, in a month's time, not only will you not feel the pinch, you'll feel a cramp from your mouth instead. Wu Mo wondered, cramp from my mouth because? John Yi quipped, of smiling too much. Ha ha. Wu Mo laughed heartily and said, now that you've put it like that, I am rather looking forward to seeing the results. Honestly, with the explosion in sales for our Brain Gold product the past few months, it has really made us a lot of money without needing to do much and I have nothing to worry about at all. But it's also true that a few months have gone by now, and when we checked our market statistics, it showed that even though sales are still strong, the growth has already tapered off and are starting to slow. At most, during any holiday, the figures would increase a little more, so our company is also finding another way to increase our advertising efforts, which was why we had that meeting last time and discussed whether we wanted to change the Brain Gold advertisement which I rejected. But now, having bought the title sponsorship to your new program, although the price is truly still a big shock to me, after the shock wears off, I have a sense of stability which I can't explain. I am sure my brother Jong's program will be good, so after it gets broadcast, with the popularity of the program, it will surely let our Brain Gold product get even more popular again. Of all that, I'm pretty confident. Zhong Yi reached out his hand and said, then may I thank you for your trust in me and let's have a happy partnership. 
to a happy partnership. Wu Mo also played along and reached out his hand to shake Zhong Yi's hand. With Zhong Yi's constantly rising popularity, the number of people who doubted him also increased as more people started to learn of him. But at the same time, the number of people who believed in him also rose, and at a greater rate than those who doubted him. Like this scene which had just played out, even when Wu Mo had only found out about the program called The Voice of China Today, without knowing the specifics of it or asking about the production timeline, with just Zhong Yi's reputation and the hallmark of his name, Wu Mo dared to agree to such an astronomical sponsorship fee and sealed the deal with just a handshake. From this alone, it could be seen just how strong the brand of Zhong Yi had become. Chapter 640 Coaches Invited to Join Midday at a famous tripe shop in the city, Zhong Yi was wearing his sunglasses while Wu Mo was in his suit as the two of them walked out from the restaurant with their hands rubbing their bellies. Wu Mo laughed and said, We've just sealed a 100 million renminbi deal and yet we only had 45 renminbi worth of tripe and flatbread for lunch. Isn't it better to have what you love to eat rather than what is good to eat? Zhong Yi commented, feeling satisfied by the meal. Now that's true. Wu Mo remarked, this is exactly what I love eating. Zhong Yi said, all right then, when I get back later, I will get someone to prepare the contract and send it over. Wu Mo opened his car door. Sure, let's go then. Do you need me to send you back? Zhong Yi waved him off. I won't bother you, I still have some work to handle. This title sponsorship fee has given me some pressure now so I will need to quickly settle the program's guest coaches and invite a few big shots over or else the show can't be carried. Only then will it do justice to your 100 million renminbi title sponsorship fee. Wu Mo said just before he left, then I'll leave the advertisement copy to you as well. No problem. Zhong Yi agreed immediately. I'll get it done before the recording of the show. At that time, all you need to do is to add a slogan placement like Drink Brain Gold, Support the Voice, in your advertisements. We will do a cross-promotion of the product and the show, but let's talk about the details at a later date. Wu Mo said, OK then. To know where a new program ranked, the most practical way to assess it was to take a look at the investment amount. If 10 million was invested? Then it was just a normal-sized production. If 20 million was invested? It should be a mid sized production. If 30 or 40 million was invested, then it would be a large scale production. But if the investment was over 100 million, then surely it would be called a mega scale production. In this world, much less singing talent shows, even other types of variety shows that had 100 million renminbi in investments were unheard of. No television stations dared to play it so big and no teams would risk such an amount of money. After all, the common figure for title sponsorship fees were around the region of 10 to 20 million renminbi. Any higher than that and the investment sum would not be earned back at all as the return on investment was not proportional. So for any television programs that had an investment of 30 to 40 million renminbi, they would already be considered as having a large production budget. But as Zhong Yi was going for broke this time, he knew that the production costs for The Voice would not be any less than 80 million renminbi. Now that the title sponsor was settled, Zhong Yi anticipated the final product even more. He was prepared to spend all of the 120 million renminbi budget so that the program would not fall short. He was going to place everything he had into it to create a mega-scale singing talent show. Equipment? They must be the top-tier ones. The stage? It must have the best design. Promotions? They needed the best time slots. Contestants? They would be given the best treatment and accommodations. As for the guest coaches, they had to be the most elite in the industry, of course. Wu Mo had just left when Zhong Yi's cell phone rang. The caller ID indicated it was from his own office. Needless to say, the only person who would dare to use the telephone in his office would be Chen Chen. It wasn't like any of the staff would dare to do so. Hello? Zhong Yi? Chen Chen? When are you coming back? I'm working outside now, so I'll only be back after noon. Oh yes, I nearly forgot about you. Get Auntie Chichi to take you to the cafeteria for lunch. Don't wait for me. Okay. Be obedient while you're at the office. Understood. 
Having comforted Chen Chen, Zhong Yi eagerly rubbed his hands together as several faces appeared in his mind. He was not prepared to go back to work yet. With a boost in the program's funds, he was much more emboldened and surely would have to get things done now. If he could settle the guest coaches and get them to join the show, then the pre-production tasks were more or less completed, and his mission would also basically be done. Who to find? Who was most suitable? An average celebrity would surely not do. If they were not professional singers, it wouldn't work either. On this front, Zhong Yi had really given it some thought. When he determined that he was going to do the voice, he had some ideas and thoughts about the guest coaches. But since they did not have enough funds earlier, he did not take any action yet. Now that he had so much more to work with, Zhong Yi could do what others did not dare, and even make it a reality. For example, inviting celebrities others could not convince or had no money to invite. In this way, he made the first call. Zhang Xia, the famous songstress of China who had been awarded the country's highest honor in singing. Many people grew up listening to Grandma Zhang Xia's songs as she was from the first generation of singers in China. Other than her reputation and qualifications, even though the youngsters these days did not consider her their favorite artist, there were no doubt about her status and ability in the singing industry. She has been singing all her life and just comparing the basics of singing, Grandma Zhong could outdo all of those heavenly kings and queens. Regarding how to use her voice, tonal adjustment, and understanding of music, Grandma Zhong had the most experience. The key was that she could handle singing different genres other than Bel Canto 1, as shown when she performed The Woman Flower, written for her and Zhong Yuanqi by Zhong Yi. Based on her relationship with Zhong Yi, and taking everything into consideration, it felt like Zhong Yi's The Voice of China would definitely need to reserve a place for Grandma Zhong. Do do, do do, the call connected. Little Zhong? Zhong Xia answered the call. He could hear the sound of a fan, probably because she was cooking. She said, wait a minute, let me turn off the heat, I was just cooking. A moment later. Zhong Xia laughed, what's the matter, little Zhong? Zhong Yi said, why don't you have your meal first and I'll call back later. You can go ahead, I'm not in a rush to eat, Zhong Xia replied in a friendly tone. And so, Zhong Yi explained, Grandma Zhong, I am currently working with Central TV Department 1 and making a program called The Voice of China. I've heard about that, I saw it on the news. Zhong Xia said, I was still thinking of taking some time to call you these few days. Are you really serious about creating a talent show that is only focused on the contestants' voices? Yes, what do you think of it? Zhong Yi asked. Zhong Xia laughed a little before responding, I think it's a good idea. Disregarding the specific audience base and the viewership ratings, at least I think that this program should be quite meaningful. Compared to all those other singing talent shows, there's a much more positive energy in it and feels much healthier for the industry, so you should do it. I'll support you for sure. Don't listen to what others say. Zhong Yi was cheered up and said, that was what I wanted to hear from you, Grandma Zhong, but don't just use your words to support me. Zhong Xia was a little taken aback as she was just casually remarking on the issue. She did not expect Zhong Yi to take it so seriously, so she asked, ha ha, then how should I support you? Help you by posting on Weibo? Or help you to promote the program within the industry? Or have you laid eyes on one of my disciples? You would like me to get a few of them to appear on your program? Zhong Yi said, that's not it at all. What I wish for is for you to join the Voice of China as one of the four guest coaches. Are you able to fit it into your schedule? Zhong Xia sounded very surprised at this. Oh. Why are you inviting me? My reputation isn't that great and can't be compared to those younger singers these days. Their fans easily number in the tens of millions. Isn't the program that you're making meant to reach out to the younger crowd? The contestants would mainly be involved in pop music, right? Zhong Yi said, your reputation isn't that great. How many people from our generation do not know about you? The parents and relatives of the people from our generation mostly grew up listening to your songs too. If you say your name is not well known, then I don't suppose that there are any big names at all in the whole of China. As for the music, our program is not only focused on pop music. The program welcomes all kinds of contestants who dabble in any kind of musical style. Besides, I've said that our program only focuses on the voice, 
so we naturally also need a coach who is very experienced with vocals and singing techniques on our side. You've been singing most of your life and I really can't think of anyone who is more suitable than you for this role. Zhang Xia forced a laugh. But I'm already so old and my children have been asking me to retire. Right now, the only thing that I can't put down is singing, but I've already let go of all professional work schedules since a long time ago. I won't hide this from you. Just last month and at the end of last year, there were two singing programs that approached me to join them as well, but I rejected them. Regarding such television variety shows and talent shows, I have a certain resistance of them. Zhong Yi said, He, Grandma Zhong, you're really not being true to your words. Didn't you just say that my new program is very meaningful and that you would support me? But now in the next instant, you're being resistant to the idea already? You told me you were unable to put down singing, and our program is made exactly to let people go back to the roots of singing. The direction of this program does not conflict with your beliefs. If you join us, you will be helping the newcomers by discovering and training a group of people who have been forgotten or ignored but have good singing abilities. This is a job that's benevolent beyond measure since you'll be grooming the future talents of the singing industry. Zhong Xia Zhong Yi lauded, if you don't take up this role, then we young ones will surely not be qualified either. In the field of music, your experience is the most valuable treasure to us. Without you paving the way for the later generation, they could easily take the wrong path or direction. Hearing that, Zhong Xia was indeed feeling rather flattered. Child, you have quite the glib tongue. Zhong Yi declared, Grandma Zhong, as the executive director of The Voice of China, I would like to once again formally invite you to join us. After pondering for a few seconds, Zhong Xia answered, You've already laid it on me quite thick, so I don't think I can reject you, right? All right then, I promise you that I will join your program as a guest coach. Zhong Yi happily replied, That's really good news. Zhong Xia said, But I want to say this beforehand. If there are any fixed results or a designated champion, I will not want to take part in it. I will just listen to the vocals and say whatever needs to be said. To be honest with you, Grandma Zhong, that is exactly what I want from you. I give you my word that, as long as I helm the program team, there will absolutely be no underhanded results fixing. If I find out that it happens, then I will deal with them one by one. There will be no room for discussion. Zhong Yi promised her. Zhong Xia was very satisfied with that. She said, that's better. Suddenly, Zhong Yi thought of something. Oh yes, we have yet to discuss the joining payment. I'll leave that to you. Zhong Xia sounded indifferent to this. But the more someone put it this way, the more Zhong Yi was unwilling to leave it unspoken. He said, how much did the two programs that approached you before offer to you? Zhong Xia replied, several million I guess, I'm not exactly sure either. Zhong Yi said, they wanted to invite you with just a few million? Then they were really insincere in their offer. How about this Grandma Zhong, we will offer you a joining payment of 10 million renminbi. What do you think? Zhong Xia said, are you taking me to be Yuan Qi? Why would I need that much? Zhong Yi laughed and noted, you're being too modest. That won't do, that won't do. Because of their friendship from the song Woman Flower, Zhong Xia had never treated Zhong Yi as an outsider. A few million is enough. Even the the other singing talent shows are only offering that amount for their joining payment, yet you are thinking of giving 10 million. I know that Central TV is notoriously stingy, so why are they being so generous this time? Zhong Yi said, they are them, I am me. The funding this time was provided by me. I'm also in charge of the program, so all the decisions will be made by me. It's settled then, 10 million will be your joining payment. I will get someone to prepare the contract later. Grandma Zhong, let's keep our personal relationship personal and business as business. That's that then. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.